I, like I said, I'm 14. I want to have a baby. At 14, I could barely take care of my dog. Send me to hell if I kill someone. You're not having a baby. I want a baby for the love that I can't get from you nor my father. My father left when I was a baby, and my mother tells me it's because of me. It's probably hurtful enough that her father's not in her life, and it doesn't help when mom's saying it's because of you why he's not. Fine. She wants Anthony's baby to hurt you. And to put this girl in the juvenile hall for a So that doesn't, doesn't help. If you're not going to listen to her, listen to what I have to say, because I've been there. I got pregnant at 15. Here's your future talking to you. This is you in eight years. At some point, somebody has to be an adult here and say, you're not running the show. I know exactly where your father is. Would you like your father to be in your life? Yes. I'll take you to go see your father, me and for the first time. Welcome to the show. My first guest is Shalanda. And Shalanda, how old are you? 14. You're 14 years old. Yes. And why are you here today? Well, Steve, I'm here today because, I'm, as you said, I'm 14 years old and I want a baby. You want a baby? Yes, and my mom called the show because she thinks I'm out of control teenager. I've been running away off and on for the last three months of this year. Why does your mom think you're, first of all, mm -hmm. we'll get, we're going to get to why you want to have a baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 14, I, yes. let me just tell you right now, this isn't meant to be mean to you, but it is ridiculous to think that you want a baby at 14. It is, but... If you live the lifestyle I've lived. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. At 14, all you're going to do is complicate your life by bringing a child in. It's children cannot raise children. It's as simple as that. Well, I'm a child raising three kids already, so it really doesn't even matter. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm a child. I'm like 14. I'm raising three kids at home already. Now, they're not mine, but they're my mother's. And I bathe them, take care of them. You know, I've been raising them since they were barely like two years old, since I was 11. I know how to take care of kids. I'm not new at this. So if I have my plan already when I turn 15, and I have what, a job. What, what is your plan? Well, when I turn 15, because I can't get a job, I'll get a job. And I'll raise my money. And then when I turn 15, I'll get pregnant. You no, know, not like by anybody, but I'll have, I'll, when, I have my, when I get pregnant. When I turn 16, I'll have my baby, and then I have my plan worked out, because it's nothing new. So your plan is a job and money, and that's going to be good enough to bring a child into the world. Mm-hmm. Job and money. And, yeah. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying the way I did it's the right way or the wrong way. Don't you want it at 14? When I was 14 years old, I wanted to go to Cubs games and collect baseball cards. No. I didn't want to have a child. But I do. I could barely take care of my dog. And you want to bring a child into the world? I know, but I, I understand. I raise a newborn. I wake up in the morning. And so you're raising, uh, you said, since 11 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're four. And sometimes you're mad that you... you no, could, I don't get mad. You it's, never get mad. I never get mad. But what I want to, in return is to have freedom. That's what I want. And I know once I have my child, I won't have freedom, but I'll have somebody to love me. That's basically all I want. What about these kids you raise now? Don't they, they love you? They love me, but they're not mine. And come on now, I'm 14, like I said. I'm, I'm not childish. I'm immature. I'm mature. I'm not immature, but I'm mature. I'm in the level between... But you're saying your mom shouldn't be letting you mm -hmm. to in leave the house you alone, with three kids, taking care of three kids, unattended. unattended. Mm -hmm. so, you're making so, my, if, if, so you're making my case for me. No, it's Your not mom that. shouldn't do that, and she shouldn't let you have a kid at 14. She's not letting me. It's not what she says. I could really, no, I'm not saying she's a bad parent, but if I want to do that, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm trying to talk you out of it. But you can't. Why? It's, it's not, I'm not, I'm, it's not like I'm pregnant right now trying to get pregnant at 15, 14. When I turn 15, that's my plan, get a job. Have, are you sexually active? Yes. And are you trying to have a child? Not right now. No, I'm trying to find the perfect guy to have a child with. I, you know, I, you scare me. How? Because I know that my daughter's going to be 14 someday. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine my 14-year-old daughter having sex. It's, that that's not the point. Though. That is the point. It scares you're, me. The fourteen-year-old, uh, when your daughter turns fourteen and she has the capability to watch three kids and love three children, she's going to want her own child one day. Yeah, and I hope that day comes when she's an adult. Not for me. Send me to hell if I kill someone. You're not having a baby. Yeah, yeah when please. you're talking about bringing a child into the world, okay. I throw you in no, jail too. Even... I know exactly where your father is. I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time.
Well, let me ask you, why are you here today? Because I'm, like I said, I'm 14 and I want to have a baby. And my mother thinks I'm out of control. She wants help. But why did you agree to come here? Did you think I was going to help you get a baby? No. <laughs> um, did you think I would take your side of it? No, I really know I need help, like, with my, like, personal problems with my mother. Because, you know, I can't communicate with her. I wouldn't be having these thoughts if I can tell my mother what I'm thinking. Like, come on out. I can't tell her nothing because if I feel like I tell her something, she's going to run her mouth. So that's like me telling, oh, yeah, mother, I want a baby. She doesn't talk me out of it. That's like the problem I'm having with her now. So if she, if she could come to me and tell me, child, you shouldn't do that, I would, I would listen to her. She doesn't say that. She sits there and like, okay, whatever. That's not, she laughs at it. That's like, that's like the thing she does. So obviously, if I'm standing here, I mean, sitting here right now, telling I want a baby at 14, she's not, she's not really doing her job as a parent. That's really how I feel. I agree with you. So that's like, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but. Well, um, let me, let me, let me ask you, Shalanda. Is it more that you're kind of just hurt that your mom and maybe you're. you're I don't have that. I don't have a father. As you can see, I don't have a father. I don't have a, a, a man to love me. If I feel that I can have a child and have someone to love me the way I love my mother and my three little, my three little brothers and sisters, that's basically all I want is love. Let me, I want you to think about this for a second and really give me an honest answer. Is this more of you wanting your mom to be in your life the, and to be a mother to you than it's really about you wanting to be a mother at 15 years old? I want my mother to love me. But if your mom said, and she loved you, and, and she acted the way you want her to, and show you attention, spend time with you, mm -hmm. and if she said to you, Shalanda, you're too young to have a baby, would you listen to your mother? Not now. Why? Because that's, it's like, I already know what I want to do. It's like, if, if I would have came to her in, in the beginning, I would have, I would have took her advice, but now it's so far along. I've been wanting a baby since, like, last year that's not nothing it's like that's like you can't bring back the past and like oh yeah mother i wanted the baby at 13. that's been a year you can't change the plans yeah but couldn't you know i'm talking to you now and i'm trying to talk to you and share my life experience with you and and really prevent something that's not going to be good for you mm -hmm. i'm not up here saying don't have a kid because it'll make your life better i'm really telling you that because it's just going to make your life harder right now you have your whole life ahead of you. I understand that, but I feel like if I have my child, I have I have friends. Not only not only if I have my mother, I have family, other family members, cousins that can support me. That's that's basically all I need. You know, but that's not how you raise children. You know, it's not, you can't I know. rely on cousins and friends and everybody else. You know what? When it comes down to it, you got when you bring a child into the world, you count on yourself. That's, I know. And then that's who your child is counting on you. Look at you. You don't even have your father in your life, right? No, I don't. Th that's got to be kind of hurtful, right? It is. Do you wonder about your father? Sometimes. Why, why don't you see your father? Well, I've never seen a fa my father a day in my life. And, um, um, basically, my father left when I was a baby. I never got the chance to see him. And to me, it feels like my father left because of my mother. And my mother tells me it's because of me. So... If I feel like I don't have a father, like, to my mother, it's like, I don't know what it is to her. Let me ask you a simple question. Does, is it hurtful that you feel like your father's not in your life? Yes, it would is. Would you like your father to be in your life? Yes. And you would have liked him to have been in your life since you were born? Since I was born. So wouldn't you possibly doing it, be doing that to your child? Do you think that some young man that you're sleeping with now, if you bring a child into the world, do you really think at 15, 16, 17, I don't know how old I the guy is? I wouldn't that to happen to my child. But do you think that guy's going to stick around and, like, raise a child? I want a baby so bad, it doesn't even matter if a, if a, if a dude, if I, love the, if I love him, I would be willing to have his baby. If he's not there, he's not there. If you're not going to listen to her, listen to what I have to say, because I've been there. I got pregnant at 15. Here's your future talking to you. Yes. This is you in eight years. I know exactly where your father is. Would you like your father to be in your life? Yes. I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time. You know what I think? I think you want your mother or your father in your life. That's what I really believe.
Let's bring your mom, Chandra, out. Let's hear what she has to say about this. How you doing, ma'am? Hi. Bye. Um, Shalanda? You... I love you a lot. I love you, too. And let me tell you, it's hard being a mother. I got five, and I just started going to school. I'm just not trying to go to school to get a bachelor's degree. I had to put my life on hold because that was my choice. Okay, I understand okay? that. It is, you're not having a baby. Yes, God I am. Is, I God want... is my witness. Okay, you're not having a baby. You can't stop me. Yes. I want a you child. You know what? God is my witness. No, I can't stop you, but it's my job to try to make a way to, to let you know that that is not okay. I done everything I could do for you. Okay, I, I understand you, that. You had your own room. Okay. You know, you, you had listen, cell phones. Listen to your mom. Listen. You had cell phones. You know, I let you go to parties. Let you spend up your you friends' house. You didn't let me go to parties. Yeah, well, maybe that's true. But I let you go up to your friends' house to spend the night. You know, I gave you more freedom than I can let you have. Give your mom a chance. No, I don't want to listen to her. She can't I know you don't it. want to, but you will listen to okay, her. Okay, I'm going to listen to her, but I'm not going to understand. I'm not. Just listen, dear, okay? That's not an act of maturity that you're showing right now. Somebody that would be able to raise a child. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to listen. You're acting like a child right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're not having a baby. Part of the problem is the two of you can't talk to each other. True. If, this is, if this is the way you talk to each other at home, I can see why nothing gets through to anybody's head. Now, Mom, I want you to listen to your daughter, okay? Because there's a problem here that she's running away, that she's, she wants a child at 14. I'm on your side here as far as I wouldn't want my 14-year-old daughter to have a child. And I would do, be like you. I would do everything I could to stop it. And I'm trying everything I can to stop with your daughter. But what I want you to do is listen to your daughter right now and give her a chance to talk. Shalana, so here's your chance. Talk to your mom. All right. I understand you don't want me to have a baby, but I want a baby for the love that I can't get from you nor my father. The pressure you put me through, watching your kids, trying to manage with school, homework, doing your chore, doing your housework, and washing sometimes your clothes. That's just too much. You call me a child, but at the same time, you want me to be mature and watch three children on my own without the help of my, my, own, my um, sister. That's hard. And for me to do that, I feel like, why should I have to watch three children? I can go out and have my own and take care of my own child, and that's just one. And you can stop treating me like a child and make it seem like I'm like an adult and stop trying to treat me like a baby because I'm not a baby. Can I tell you that when I was 21, I didn't know what I was doing? Can I tell you that? I, I was understand. 21. I understand. I didn't know what I was doing. But if you, if, you, if you was in my age right now watching three children, you would not say that. And I'm sorry that you feel that you don't have a mother and a father. Shalanda, I believe that, you know, that God says... He helped me out even more. He ain't helping me out less because I'm by myself. He's helping me out more. And I go with that strength that God has given me every day to protect my children, to do what I'm supposed to do. You say that, but when you leave me with your three children, you turn your phone off. You on me? No. Mom, is it, is it true that maybe you're putting too much on a 14-year-old to, to ask her to watch three children and one's a baby, right? No, well, my youngest is seven. Okay, so she's watching three young children, right? Yes. Isn't that a lot to ask for of a 14-year-old? Yes. I mean, how often is this every day that she has to do this? She, she will say every day. I, go, I do go to school. I do work. There's times, I'm not going to lie, I go to the club with my friends or, you know, if I got to go shopping, you know. I think that a lot of things is I don't let, let me, them know. Let, 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 wait, let's back up, Mom. Okay. If you're asking your 14-year-old daughter to help with the family, I understand that. She's definitely smart enough to watch children. I believe that. Having one, totally different story. But if your daughter is feeling all this pressure of having to raise these three children while you work a lot, but then when you have time, Dom, where you can be at home with your children, is it responsible to be going out with clubs with your friends? No. I mean, no. you have to make a decision. Who do you want to spend time with? If you're, if you're working so much, you say you work two jobs or? I, I did. I worked two you jobs. You work two jobs. Okay. You're doing the right thing. You're, you're working hard to support your family. But, you know, then I hear it out of the next world. But, you know, I know I shouldn't go out to clubs with my friends, you know. Well, then why don't you make a decision? You know. 
Here are your 14 year old daughters talking about having a baby. She wants a baby when she's 15. Don't you say, well, you know what? I'm not going out. I'm going to stay at home and spend some time with my daughter and maybe prevent this. I, I did not know that I, I can, I mean, I'm not perfect, you know? Nobody is. And I'm not perfect, and I, and I, and I granted, I shouldn't go to clubs. You know, maybe I shouldn't go to clubs, but it's not that it's every day. It's not even every month. It's more every, every five or six months. I might at least go once or twice. So I mainly I go with family, an event. But I do agree that I shouldn't put all the responsibility on her while watching my kids. And did you, did you tell your daughter that it was her fault that her father's not in her life? No. Yes, you do when you're mad at me. Yes, you do. No. I, you've, you never, you've never said that to her? I, God is my witness. I want to believe I didn't. Because, look, can I tell you why? Well, hold on, Mom. I think as a parent, you either know you said that to I your didn't child say or you that. didn't. I didn't say that. And the reason why I know I wouldn't say that... Is, 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 is she lying about that? No, because I'm not, I'm not going to just get into our life story, but at a, at a time when... We got into an argument, and I said, "I don't like you. You're, I call, I like you're not my mother. You're, you're Sandra to me." She's like, "Well, if you don't have me, you don't have your father, and your father's not here because of you. And I'm your mother and your father, so there's no father in your life. So it doesn't even matter about your father." That's exactly what she says. That is I, she is she making that up? I would say she's not, but in, in defense, mom, let, let, mom, let me finish. Let just me be, finish. Let's, let let's me be finish. honest. I am going to be honest with you. In my defense, I would say to her at the same time, she was running away. She was giving me all these trouble. And, and I could not, I'm not saying, Steve, one justifies the other. And I'm not saying that. But she put me through a lot from January until May to where if I said to her, I said a lot of angry stuff to her within that time frame. So if she's sitting here telling you I said it, she's pretty honest. She, I mean, she's more honest, I'm going to be honest with you, than what I would be. You're the adult. You have to take the high road. And you don't ever make your kids feel bad why there's a, not a father in, the, in, first of all, it's probably hurtful enough that her father's not in her life. And it doesn't help when mom's saying, it's because of you, why he's not. <laughs> you are acting like a child. I'm going to do it, and I don't care. That's how a child acts. All I got to do is one easy, easy little thing. Oh, I'm calling your probation officer. Thank you. Not exactly. Yeah, when you're talking about bringing a child into the world, okay. I throw you in no. jail, too. But I'm just saying, if I said that, I, I know it's wrong. But at the same time, when she's running away, she's, you know, Mom, don't know she where wants, she's going. She wants to have this baby to hurt you. That's what she wants to do. I don't believe that. I believe she that, wants that, that's it. That is. To hurt me? It is. It is. I wanted to make sure I got this right. Because you said it because I want you to watch my three. Because I asked you to help with your brother. If and I sisters. didn't watch your three kids and had to watch a whole bunch of kids, I wouldn't want a baby. But taking care of three kids and learning what to do, that's like, okay, well, I might as well just have my own and take care of my own instead of three and having to watch a whole bunch of other kids. So I, can I ask you this? If I have to say, and I have to keep my promise, that I would not let you watch my kids, would you promise me that this would be something that you would consider until you get through with college? Could, I, or even until you get through with high school? I can't. Why not? Because I already want a baby. Okay, but, I, but could you please reconsider? Could you just reconsider? I think to me that's reasonable. Could you reconsider? Could you help me out? You're too young. You, you, you should be enjoying... I understand. I'm not enjoying my childhood. If I, if I was out having listen, fun with my listen. friends, I wouldn't think about having a baby. If I'm right now... I can't let you have fun with your friends. You run away. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You don't you're, trust you're, me. You so don't even matter. Trust Hold on. Stop. Stop. Mom, I got to say, you're giving me a headache. <laughs> but here the, the situation is, if I move into your house and I'm the man of the house and I know that you're 14 years old and you're having sex and you're going to be running away, guess what? You're not going out. You're okay. going to stay home. Okay, but if I stay in the house watching your three kids, ain't no reason for me to stay in the house. And then I know I can just go out automatically when you're sleeping and get why, pregnant. Why are you running away? Because the pressure she's put me through. You got to do this. And now that I'm back and I'm on probation, I got to do everything she says or she's going to put me in juvie. I still regret it. I don't care. I, I'm, that's not going to make me feel like you're a slave and listen to everything you do. I didn't put her in juvie because of just, hey, let me call the police. Shalanda, I mean, as much as you might not like to hear this, mm -hmm. and as much as I didn't like to hear it when I was 14, you have rules. If you run away, yeah. And if your mom can't control you, that's what she's supposed to do. Call the police. 
If you're not going to listen, control me. well, when you're when you're in the Audi home, they can control you, right? Because you ain't going anywhere. Okay. Is that where you want to be? Obviously, if I'm living with her, that's where I'm going to end up. We've had somebody that was on the show before, and they've come here to try to help you, to try to talk some sense into you. Mm -hmm. So let's bring her out, and let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> and I, I want you to listen, okay? Hi. Hi. I've been listening to you out there. If you're not going to listen to her, listen to what I have to say, because I've been there. I'm 22 years old. I have three kids. I got pregnant at 15, had my baby at 16, and it was hard. And I had to have my mom there because I couldn't do it by myself. And I hear you out here saying, you want a baby, you have a plan, and this and that. Oh, I had plans, too. I had, I had to put my life on hold for my kids. I wanted to be a model, and I couldn't do that. You know why? Because I had to make sure I work, go to school, to make sure my kids have f diapers, wipes, food. I, need to, I didn't have no car. I had to get on the bus, take my daughter to school, and then take myself to school on the bus. Are you ready for this? Yeah. You're ready for this? Mm -hmm. I don't think you are. I mean, you can look that way, but I'm serious right now, you know? Yeah. You say you're a slave now. When you have that baby that you say you're going to have, you're going to really be a slave. Here's the truth is, here's your future. Here's your future talking to you. I'm still working this to is take you. care of this my is, kids. This is you in eight years. All I want is one. She got three. Oh, I you know what? Yeah, one, got once two, you have got one, three, I didn't got want four. any. I got five. Well, I wouldn't take it back. But I have them now. And now I have to work for my kids. You don't work for yourself. You don't go out and work for yourself, have money for yourself. You have money for them kids to live on. Let me ask you a question. And I don't even know this. You were on the show before, right? Oh, yes. And when you were, you said you, had, you, you got pregnant at 15 and you had a child at 16. Mm -hmm. The man that had that child with you when you were 16 years old, is he still in the picture? No. They're does not going to be around. Does he provide you with really anything for this child? Or not. Well, I do it on my but own. But see, see, that's the problem here. I keep trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. You say you'll be okay with it, but you're not okay with that your own father's not in your life. And you'll be doing the same thing that hurts you now to your own child. Exactly. See, the scary thing is, it's with this child here, and I hear it, and, you know, my father probably would have handled the situation a little differently with me. Um, <laughs> But my thing is, your mother comes out. She's admitted she's made mistakes. I'm sitting here hearing a child saying, and when I say child, you are acting like a child. I'm going to do it, and I don't care. That's how a child acts. You know what a, a, an adult does? You know what? I better stop and think about this. I better make the best decision I can for myself, for my family. And the best decision is, is to get a career. Mm -hmm. You know, here Natalie, Natalie's been on the show. She's been through the same thing that you've been through. Mm -hmm. because I, I'm can't, telling you, I don't the, know how much more that, that I can do to bring a, woman, uh, bring a woman that's done exactly what you've done and is advising you against it, is telling you you are going to screw up your life. We're not all telling you this because we don't want what's best for you. We don't want what's best for for you to have a good time, to have fun. Yeah, we want that for you. We want you to enjoy your childhood. We don't want you to screw it up. And you know what I get sick of? I got sick of it when I was being a policeman. I get sick of it now when I read the paper. Children having children. You're going to need handouts. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You don't have the uh, life experience. You don't have the maturity level to pass on to your child when you're 15 years old. And then what happens? Your child is going to be 14 or 15 and goes, well, my mom did it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And my dad ain't around. And, and she said it's because you, you'll end up saying the same thing to your child that she said to you. Believe me. <laughs> and you don't, you said you have this big plan. And I'm telling you, I'm a little frustrated because we're up here not trying to make your life worse. We're trying to make it better and talk some sense into you. Mm -hmm. 
but I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. Mm -hmm. You know, your mom's saying she made a mistake. Here's a young woman saying I did the exact same thing. And you're, you're sitting there like, you know, uh, a spoiled child saying I'd rather be in the Audi home. Okay, she said that, but one... Now I'm talking about what you're saying right now. What you're saying. Mm. You really want to go back to the Audi home? Because I know I dropped off the, lots of kids there. And I know as a grown man, I don't even want to spend the night in the Audi home. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, all it is is a mini jail. And kids are mean to each other in there. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. And you'd rather be there than at home? Your mom's here... I don't have a choice, so it don't even matter. You don't you have, do a, have choice. a choice. You do have a choice. It's your choice. All I got to do is one itty bitty little thing. Oh, I'm calling your probation officer. Thank you. Not exactly. Yeah, when you're talking about bringing a child into the world, okay. I'd throw you in no, jail, too. Even, what? That's not, that's not the issue. Oh, that is the issue. That's okay. why you're on the okay, show today. Exactly. But I'm talking about if I go home. Oh, you're getting an attitude. Oh, don't make me call your probation officer. Stupid you're getting an attitude like now. I, with I, her, I with me, mm -hmm. with the audience, with everybody you have an attitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, yes, I want to be sympathetic. And I want to help you out. But at some point, somebody has to be an adult here and say, you're not running the show. And that has to be you. Well, let's go meet your father for the first time. If you wanted to meet your dad, he's here. I got him for you. I feel like you should have been there from day one because I've never seen you. Treat her like an adult sometimes and then treat her like a child another. Exactly. You can't do that. You can't play both sides. You have to be firm and be the adult all times. So... I know that. If, I mean, if, if, but it's hard. Can I say it's hard? Because at the same time, I, I want to give her freedom. I want to give her the independence. And it's not that I want to. It's just that she, her, she's missing that part of her life. You know, she's missing that ex that person's a part of her life. Well, she said so, that you need so she needs someone to talk to. How come you don't sit down with this woman right here? Okay, that she says goes that and she runs her mouth. She goes and runs her well, mouth to the family members, her friends. That's why I'm telling her nothing. That, that, that could be true. Oh, but geez. let me say this. Okay, you know what? Everybody stop. Everybody stop. <laughs> We've gotten to the point now. We're, you know, we're just going back and forth here. Mom has, has taken responsibility. She has said she has taken advantage of you. That's, that means something. Mm. It does, whether you like it or not. Eight for her to days, come on and say, I'm, listen. I understand. Okay? Mm -hmm. She came on the show. She came on the show because they care about you, and they don't want you to make a mistake. So what I want to do now is, Mom and Natalie, I thank you for coming on. Thank you for no problem. being there for her. I really hope you don't do that. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, really, really put a hold I on want, your life. I'd, I'd like to ask the two of you to leave the stage right now. I want to talk you. to Thank you. Thank you. You got a lot of issues with your mom. I understand that. I understand you might be angry with her. But it's, it's, it's real simple. You can't, have, you, you can't have a kid. You can't have a child right now because you're too damn young. You're too damn young. <laughs> and you said yourself, you said yourself that you're doing this because you're mad at your mom and you want to get back at her and, you know, not take care of her kids. Is that the reason why to have a, a child? Think about it. That's not to bring the reason. A, but, you know, to bring a human life into the world mm -hmm. is because you're mad at someone? It's the exact opposite of why you're bringing a child into the world. It's because you love someone that you're bringing a child into the world. So let's not confuse it. You don't bring children into the world because you're mad. And I think part of it is... You're mad because your father's not in your life, right? That too. And you were told, you know, she's made a mistake. And she said, your dad's not in your life because of you. Well, I don't think that's true. I don't think your dad took off because well, you. I, never, I don't know because I never met him. So. Well, it's, I don't know what the reason is. But I'm guessing maybe it was probably they couldn't get along. I mean, that's probably the obvious answer, right? You have trouble getting along with your own mom. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that maybe he had trouble getting along with your mom. But that doesn't excuse the fact that he's not been in your life. That doesn't excuse the fact. Mm -hmm. Now, what if I told you I know exactly where your father is? And I could take you to him. See, we contacted your father. 
and he was supposed to show up on the show. He hasn't seen you since you've been three months old. And he was supposed to be here today. And you know what? For some reason, he didn't show up. My mother. No. Me, so I tell him? I, I don't know why. You, you, you asked us to find your father, right? Well, we found him. And I'm asking you, would you like to meet your father? I, he wouldn't come, so what I'm telling you, I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time. <laughs> Do you want to meet your father? Yes. Well, I don't know what reason why he didn't come here today, because we sent the car for him, and he didn't show up. But since he won't come see you, I'm going to take you to him. If it's all right with your mother, and if it's all right with you. I'm gonna bring, let's bring mom back out. Is it, is it all right if I take your daughter to her father yeah. with you? Yeah. Would you go with? I would go with you. Do you want to go meet your father for the first time? Are you ready Thank for you. this? Are you ready to do this? Well, yes. let's go meet your father for the first time. Let's go. <laughs> let's go right off the stage. So you're Roy, and you're Shalanda's dad. Yes. And so your daughter was on the show. She's 14 years old, and she's talking about she's 14. She wants to have a child when she's 15. She hasn't seen you ever, really. I mean, you saw her when she was born. She was nine months old. And since problems with her and your mother, for whatever reason, you haven't been in her life, I think she's hurting because... Her mother hasn't always been there for her and put a lot of pressure on her, raising three of her children. And I think she really wants to meet you. And I told her I'd do everything I can to come and find you and, and have you come and talk to your daughter. So I'd like to bring your daughter in and you can talk to her, okay? Hi. All right, Roy. Come here, Shalanda. This is, this is your father, Roy. Okay. It's all right, baby. It's okay. <laughs> now, Shalanda. One of the reasons why I came down here and got your father was because you came on the show today and you said, you know, you've had problems and you want to have a baby at 15. And I talked a little bit with your father and you know what? Your father's concerned about you and he wants to be, I don't want to put words in your right. mouth, but you... I've been you, searching for you for a long time, bro. And he right. wants to be in your life. What is a father, can you... Because I, I didn't have you when I was young. So I know you're going through some stuff, so don't worry about it, baby. It's going to be all right. Don't cry. It's all right, boo. It's all right, baby. You got a lot to talk about. You good? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> now listen, I, I got your father back in your life, right? I came and I got him and I brought you to him. So now you got to do me a favor. You do me a favor. You're going to listen to your dad. And if your dad says he doesn't think it's wise for you to have a child, you're going to take some advice from him. This is your father now. Okay? What do you want to say to your father? I don't like you should have been there from day one. It's a lot we need to talk about. <laughs> you know, maybe you got to wipe the slate clean now and... 
and he is here now and he wants to be involved in your life and you want somebody in your life you got to give you got to give him a chance it's going to be okay boo boo I know this is a lot at 14, you know? It's a lot. But you know, your mom on the show said she's willing to make some changes. And now your father's here. He's standing right in front of you. You, you wanted your dad, you wanted to meet your dad? Mm -hmm. He's here, I got him for you. And I know this is a lot to take in in one, one day for a 14 year old. But now, just slow down. Take some time. One like I wasn't gonna believe me. This year was our year because I'm going I was coming to you this year, believe me. Are you happy to see your dad? This right now has to be about really moving forward. That's all and, I and, and you know, and forgetting about the past. A relationship didn't work out between him and your mom, but that happens all the time. And you know what? He wants to be in your life. He's been fighting to get in your life. He's proven that to me. So I think moving forward. I to prove that. And what I, what I think now is moving forward. And Roy, I brought your daughter to you. Just, you know, be a part of her life. Be good to her. You know, you got here's your dad standing right in front of you. Right. Your mom's willing to make changes. Your dad's in your life now. He's standing here. This is about moving forward and putting a 14 year old girl on the right track and get you to start thinking straight again. We're gonna make it work? Yeah, I never had no doubt. Roy, now that I brought your daughter to you, promise me man to man, man that you're gonna be in her life from now on. From day, from this day forward. Good luck to you, Roy. All right, thank you. All right. Shonda, good luck to you, honey. Thank you, sweetie. Listen to your dad now, okay? okay. All right, we're going to leave you guys alone. And you know what? We're going to follow up. I'm going to make sure that your mom's making the changes and dad's staying in your life, okay? I'm not going nowhere. You got my number too, Roy. You need anything? You need help to get in her? And you need help? If she doesn't listen to you, you call me. We'll do it together. All right. All right. Good luck to you. All right. He beat her so bad when she was seven months pregnant that she had to go to the hospital. You wanted to confront your mom. There's a lot of lies that she's telling you. Did he ever threaten to kill you? He has made threats. To kill you? Well, yeah. He punched you in the face and he punched you in the stomach. Well, he never punched me in the stomach. He kicked me. Oh, okay. I quit I'm not, drinking. I quit smoking. Care. How many times have you told Megan you've changed? Did this four years ago. He got. I don't help. care if he did it 40 years ago. I don't care. You punched a pregnant lady. I think even at 17, you're dead. You will never have a relationship with your daughter as long as you're with this scumbag. This is the offer. You either pick her and your daughter, or you pick James. Nobody's punching you. Make whatever decision you want. Welcome to the show. My first guest is Sharon. Sharon, why are you here? Steve, I'm here today because I'm, I'm outraged. I have done everything in my power to change, help my daughter and make better choices in her life. And she called the show and, and is having me come here to confront me about her daughter, who I have custody of because of the choices she has made. Okay. Yes. Why do you have custody of her daughter? It all started. Is this her, her oldest? Yes, it is. And it all started with, um, I got a phone call. I brought them to my home so I could give her a good home. And maybe they would be parents. I get a phone call when she's only a week and a half old. A week and a half old. She can't breathe, so I tell her what newborns do. I get home at 1 o'clock in the morning. My apartment door is unlocked. The lights are all on. The diaper bag is there. The bottles are there, and the car seat is there. What would you have thought had you got a call earlier that this baby could not breathe? I don't think something happened. I freaked out thinking, oh, my God, they called an ambulance. 
I got to a phone, I got a hold of her at 2 o'clock in the morning. They were out riding with their friends. Well, where I, was the baby? The baby was with them. Not in a car seat or anything? Not in a car seat, no diapers, no formula, nothing. And they're just out driving around yes, with their friends? at 2 o'clock in the morning. And what happened? They show up at my door. A friend of hers brings the baby into the door, and she stumbles in. She stumbles against one wall, and I'm like, give me the baby. She stumbles against another wall, and that's when I smelled alcohol. So she doesn't, she's not even the one that brings in the baby? No. She sends some no. other drunk in? Yes, yes. And so what happened? Then you the, police the police came in. They called the police. Somebody called the police because of the commotion. The police came in. They were going to arrest her and told her that she should be grateful that she has a mother that cares about this child and that they that she needed to think twice about her life. Your daughter, how old was she when she had her first child? She was just turned 17. Okay, so at 17, I'm sure you weren't very happy that your 17-year-old daughter was having a baby. Absolutely not. But <laughs> as a mother, you said, you can stay with me. I'll help you raise this child. Right. right. But she didn't even take that help. She's out. She's trying to be with this guy who was abusive to her that beat Absolutely. her up. Absolutely. He beat her up so bad when she was seven months pregnant, seven months pregnant, that she had to go to the hospital and eventually ended up with charges for endangerment to a child. When, when, you, when you say he beat her up, what exactly did he do to her? He beat her. <laughs> like, I mean, did he, is he punching her in the I, face? I, 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 I couldn't tell you. I wasn't there. You, I just you was, didn't ask your daughter? What did he do? She just said he beat her. And he hit her in the stomach several times. And how does, she, how does she end up going back to this man? She's done this numerous times. This is not the first time or the last time that he beat her. They were arrested for trying to kidnap. They did kidnap Marissa. Her. Well, how did they I came they did home kidnap her? At late at night. I had, I had let her come back into my home like a mother to give her another opportunity to improve her life. I thought he was in jail. I thought he was in prison. I come home and... Once again, everything is gone. The baby's gone. They're gone. Um, the police worked very hard, got the child back, got Megan to surrender the child back to them within 20, about 24, 36 hours later. Did he ever threaten to kill you? He has made threats. To kill you? Well, yeah. He never punched me in the stomach. He kicked me. Oh, okay. For the past 25 minutes, all you've done is defend him and smear your mom. Get off my stage. God. Get off. So the police come. They grab the baby back they bring her back to you well they they had Megan surrender the child to them in another town they gave her an opportunity if you will come with us right now and go home to your mother we will not arrest you and she chose him the police even gave her a chance when she kidnapped right. your daughter or your granddaughter and said turn yourself in or surrender the baby go back to your mom and we won't lock you up and she said nope Lock me up. I she want to be with him. To him. She went back to him. All right. Well, we're going to bring your daughter out and find out why she called the show to confront Absolutely. you. Let's bring out your daughter, Megan. Take the chair away, Mike. <laughs> You're lying. I'm not lying. No, and you, you know are I'm not a liar, lying. Mom. James you... never threatened Marissa's life. Ever. He would never threaten his daughter's life. Yes, he did. No, he did yes, not. Yes, he did. Mom, and you were sitting you right there when it happened. You always do this. You no, over exaggerate everything. You're, yes, you do, Mom. You're the drama And queen. I never told them, lock me up. I never told them that. They, they said, did not say you that. can they go back home. You no, could come to home. Me. They would send you back talk. home. Just and you listen. chose you to go back with James. You always never let me talk. Just let me talk, okay? Whatever. You know what they told me? Mom, they were not going to indict us on this because of the fact it was not 24 hours later, Mom. It was uh, like you know six, what? Stop seven right there. I stop. You know, I don't want to get into 24 hours no. and they were going to indict me for this. I don't care about any of that. What this is a show about? You called to confront your mom, right? Yes. What did you want to exactly confront her about? Everything that she has been saying to my daughter about James and I. And why does she? How is she able to say this to her, your daughter? Because mom got temporary custody of her. And how did she I get temporary? I have permanent temporary? custody. I have permanent custody.
custody. And when did you get permanent custody? Oh, when we bat went back to court in July of 2004. It was for temporary no, custody. No, sir, you read your papers. You know, here's a woman that doesn't even know if you lost your child permanently or temporarily. Isn't that pretty sad? You wanted to confront her, and you don't know whether you temporarily or permanently have custody of your child. Look, I understand what you're saying, but my mom is very manipulative, manipulative, and you have you've only heard what she is okay, telling I'm, you. I'm going to ask you. There's a lot of lies that she's telling you. Did she lie when you said that your boyfriend beat you while you were pregnant? No, she didn't. Did he ever threaten to kill you? He has made threats to kill you. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does your Mom, have custody of your child? Yes. Okay. So you tell me. I'm just guessing here. I'm going to go into this blindly. Who's the bad guy? Your boyfriend or the mom? Both. Both are bad. But she has never given... Who are you with? I'm with James. Okay, if they're both bad, right? You said they're both bad. No, he he used to do that stuff. He is not like that anymore. And how long and has he changed help. his life? Within the last year or two? Just kind of make it more precise. Okay, within the last year. Nah, yeah, lower it down even more. To what? You tell me the answer. It's been You about know a what year. the answer is. It's like two months, right? No. Two months. That's no. what I've been told. No. That two months ago he threatened you? No. Now, let me tell you about this story, okay? Oh, sure. When this happened with James making the threats, that was because of me doing what my mom told me to, keep Michaela away from him, stay away from him. I do it, but is why that, keep a daughter it, from him that he's being a great parent to and that he's being a dad to? Was this the baby that was inside you when he was beating you? No. Oh, so it was your other daughter? Yes. So he thought it was okay to strike a pregnant woman? Yes. And how many times did he strike you when you were pregnant? Maybe twice. Just two times? This was four years ago. I don't care how many years ago it was. Here was a man that made the decision to beat a woman that was bringing his child into the world. How many times did he strike you? I don't know. You don't know? Maybe two, two. When I was pregnant, probably about one or two times. Oh, separate times. And when he struck you, what, what do you mean he beat you? Like, did he punch you in the face? Did he punch you in the stomach? What did he do to you? Both. He punched you in the face and he punched you in the stomach. Well, he never punched me in the stomach. He kicked me. Oh, okay. You're out of your mind to think that I'll ever lay down with you again. Well, you beat me with your child. How did you have another child with somebody else while you were so committed to Jane? Let's bring that guy out. <laughs> Here's a guy, not once, but on at least, we know, two separate occasions that beat you and sent you to the hospital, right? Did he not send you to the hospital? I had to go to the hospital. I was pregnant. And because he beat you. It wasn't like this was a regular checkup. This was because you were pregnant with an unborn child and he beat you, right? I don't remember. This was four years ago. You don't I can't remember. remember? Do you remember him going to jail for the endangerment of a child? Yes. That you remember? Yes. He beat you. You went to the hospital. He went to jail. You remember all that? Mm -hmm. Nobody gave you advice. Man, you better get away from this guy. <laughs> Mom, okay. I want to ask you to leave the stage. I want to talk to your daughter alone. We'll bring you, you back out. You. Why would you stay? Why would you ever lay down with that man again? I did leave him. Okay? No, you didn't. Yes, he went I to did. jail. He went to jail. There's a big and difference when he there. Got out, I did not go back to him. Until how long? He changed. He is a different person. He did his anger management. He did his parenting classes. He got his GED. He is motivated. He is the best father to Michaela ever. And he, when he when he got hurt, out of jail, when he got to jail, how long did he go to jail for? 15, 16 months. 15, 16 months. And how long ago was that that he got out of jail? Two years ago. 
and in all that time, in the last two years, he's never hit you? No, never hit me. Never raised his hand at you? No. Never threatened your mom? He has never threatened my mom. Well, she's saying he, no, he did. No, he has never threatened my mom. Never. So I have you, never heard him threaten my mom. I'm well, sorry, you never but heard. I haven't. But it's not a stretch of imagination if a man that would beat a pregnant woman would then threaten somebody else, right? It's not a big stretch, big leap of faith, would you say? No. Okay. You called the show. Yes. You wanted to confront your mom. Yes. And exactly why? I just wanted to try to get things together so I can work on a relationship with her and have one with my daughter. I'm very angry about what she tells my four-year-old when she comes back to me and says, Mom said that um, you're bad. Mom said James is bad. Mom said that I'm not supposed to love y'all. What am I supposed to do? Would you do you really believe that your mom me? is telling your daughter you're not supposed not to love you? say these things. First of all, you she lost. Let, like, hold on. First, first of all, let's get down to the bottom of the fact. That is, you went out and you acted so irresponsibly that your child was taken away. Your child was given custody to your mother. That's not what and happened. It, it is what when happened. When she told you what happened is not what happened. Well, you tell me what happened. My mom kicked us out. That's how she got taken away. She kicked and me. And why did she kick you out for? She kicked us out because James left because they was always fighting. He didn't want to stay there anymore. My mom and I got to a fight about it, and she kicked me and Marissa out and told us that we better be gone the next day before she gets home from work. I left, and she called CPS and said that I was out on the streets. I was an unfit mom and that I had nowhere to go. And so why did they take your baby away then? They came and they took her because she was saying that I was giving her too much Tylenol. Wait a second. You had your baby. Yes. Your mom makes a bunch of crazy lies up, right? Right? That's what you're saying. Yes. She made up a bunch of crazy lies, and some child investigative people came, right? Yes. And they said, your mom make these allegations, we're taking your baby, and that's the end of the story. Yes. Um, and that's how it worked, and they didn't do any investigation. They didn't, like, check your baby for Tylenol or... Yeah, they... I mean, they didn't check the stuff for the Tylenol and stuff. But um, I don't know if they did that or not. But they did bring us back to make a safety plan with my mom. And they said that she could... E I could either sign over the safety plan to, for her to go with my mom, or she'd go to foster care, and I'd never see her again. Okay. It's been four years now, right? Yes. Why haven't you gotten her back in these past four years? I don't have, I don't have the money to go back to court for her right now. I mean, I'm just trying to do what I'm supposed to do. I've done everything the court has told me to, and I just want to have a relationship with my daughter. Would you want a relationship so much with your daughter that you'd say, I'm going to take a time out from James, I'm going to leave James for six I months? Have. I did. I'm My saying now, today. I'm saying today. Me. You're here to get your, you want to see your daughter, you want a relationship with your daughter. I'm saying, are you willing to make that sacrifice today for your daughter? I think James should have a relationship with Marissa, too. The one that he was punching while he was in your belly? Listen, okay? He did this four years ago. He got I don't help. care if he did it 40 years ago. I don't care. <laughs> For the past 25 minutes, all you've done is defend him and spear your mom. Get off my stage! Get off! Get off! Do you still want your daughter back? Well, yes, I would, but not right now. I mean, and I why want right, her. And, and why? Because right James now. and Marissa have never had a relationship. But what I'm saying is, I know right now, you know, with everything that's happened, that's her environment. That's her, you know, that's everything she's ever known. You know, I'm not just going to the woman, the woman, the, the woman that's raised her every day, almost since she's been a child, uh, since she was born, right? Yes. So how, how long has she, your mother had her? For about three and a half years. So after the first six months of her life, your mother's had her. Mm -hmm. Raised her. Is she a good girl? A good little girl? Yes. And you want to come out here and tell your mom she's lying and she's crazy and everything because else? Because she is. She lies and exaggerates everything. And 
I mean... Did she exaggerate about him beating you while you were pregnant? No, she didn't. Okay. It sounds like you're blaming mom and not him. It sounds like mom blames everybody else but herself. You know what? This is it your responsibility. You ways. were a 17-year-old, and you got pregnant, and you stay with I this guy. I was young. I made mistakes. I've learned from mistakes. I... You know what? Even at 17, and I'll tell you, I was the biggest goof all around. I'll admit it. I knew not to punch a pregnant woman. Okay? You were raised in a good family. He wasn't. I mean... Oh, so you have to be raised in a good family. Listen, listen, okay? Before you all start laughing. How come you don't f defend your mother this way, it's the way you not, defend this man? I have to... <laughs> She's being so soft. It's all about her. It I want to take another burden on. I raised my children. Now I want to do it all over again. That's why she has nothing to do with any of her other grandchildren. But everything Maybe she's too busy raising your daughter. You can make me look like I'm this awful bad mother, but I'm not. I'm not trying no, to make I'm you wait. You know what? I'm, raising I'm not trying to make you look own, awful. You know what? I'm not trying ever. to make you look awful. You're doing it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> She runs off stage. Let's bring out the father of the year, James. How you doing, James? All right. Please don't sit down on my stage. to say running her big mouth backstage. Come out on stage and say it to me. Oh. Don't be yelling at my producers. Yell at me. I didn't yell at anybody backstage. I said this is what was going to happen. It's all going to be about James. This is not why we came on the show, but yet it's all going to be about James. This and show is about taking right about accountability for your actions. And, and you want to defend for him. He has been years. He has been. And for the past 25 minutes, all you've done is defend him and smear your he mom. Has. Get off my stage. Go on. Get off. How are you doing, James? Yeah. I'm sorry I'm a little upset with your... Is she, Megan's your girlfriend, or...? She's my wife. She, she's your wife? Yes. You're legally married. Okay, so, James, let's get serious here. And y'all gonna get him pissed off, and y'all... Okay, yeah, and, you know, Megan, keep running mouth. You want to stand by your man, but you do it while your mouth zips. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> want to stand by him? Want to go stand by him? Go stand by him. So you can talk to him, make him look so bad. Did, did, yeah, I, admit, did, did I make him punch you? Did I make him punch he you? He made mistakes in the past, and he did what he did. Well, you only like hear... I have said. Did I call you up and make you come on my show? Did no, I call... no okay. and that's why. I... Okay. She must not have seen my show. <laughs> To be perfectly clear, she called me, and she wanted help with from me to get her daughter away from her mom so her and James could be with. That's why she called the show. Right? Yes. yes. Not to get our daughter back, to, you know, have, to be able to see our daughter, you know, visit her. Her, her mom quit talking bad on us like we're the baddest people on earth. People well, you're make the, mistakes. We're well, not the best people on earth, right? No, we're not. We all make mistakes. Do, James, let me ask you a question here. We make mistakes. Yeah, you know, my dad told me, don't drink when you go out as a teenager. You know what? I popped a couple cold ones. I made a mistake. I did. And you know what? My, stake, my mistakes were corrected. You punched a pregnant lady. Is that a mistake? When you clenched your fist and you struck it into the woman you love carrying your unborn child, that was a mistake? Yeah, it was. I was on drugs. You know, oh. I was hanging with the wrong crowd. So what? Okay. Wow. What, what, you, what, what drugs were you on? 
I was smoking weed, drinking. I get very violent when I drink alcohol. You clenched your fist, and you were striking her, and this didn't happen once. She said it happened more than one time. This happened a couple times. So after the first time that you got high and drunk and you beat her up, you, did you get high and drunk again and beat her up again? Yeah. So after mistake number one, then won't you say, well, my girlfriend, who I love, my daughter's in her belly, maybe I'm not going to get drunk and high anymore so I don't hurt my baby anymore. Wouldn't you, wouldn't, wouldn't you say that? I think even at 17, you're that <laughs> Even at 17? <laughs> even at 17, aren't you at least that smart that if you did it once, you would never let it happen again? I'll say I wasn't. Obviously, you weren't. And so, you weren't that smart. You beat her once, twice. And somebody, oh, you know, you kept, you know, just beating that poor guy up over that issue. How about that poor baby that was inside the belly? Who was defending that baby? Nobody was. Nobody was. Right. Nobody was. Not even her. Because she let it happen again. She didn't say, you're out of your mind to think that I'll ever lay down with you again while you beat me with your child. You will never, ever get my comfort again. How did you have another child with somebody else while you were so committed to Jane? Let's bring that guy out. <laughs> we'll give it to you. Well, let, you know what? Let's 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 give it. We'll give it to you the first time. One time you get a free pass. What about the second time? Oh, it was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. So what if, what if you didn't get indicted? What if you didn't get locked up? Probably a mistake would have happened again, right? No. What would have changed? Everything. Why? It didn't change after the first time. Why would it change the second time? We split up. Who split up she from She split who? up with me. She split up with yes. you. And why? Because of the things I'd done to her. And, and because did. you were indicted, right? She's going to leave me because I got indicted. But you got indicted. Yes, I did. Right. And then you broke up. No, it was before. You're It was before. I went to the... I'm talking to... I, didn't I tell you I'm talking to him now? And you wanted him to take account of responsibility for his actions, and he is. Okay, so it's okay to do what you do. Are you going okay to keep your yap shut while I talk to James and or it's not? okay for you Are to you going to keep your yap shut? I want to talk to James now. Now, James, what do you want to happen today? You call the show. I hear you want the child in your life. Yes. Okay, well, just two minutes ago, you said you don't want her back. That's you just not well, it's not why we came here to get her back. Can he answer we for want... himself or is he too You're stupid? You're making our words switch up and be different. That's not Oh, I'm like your mom, it. I guess. My daughter, I'm looking for my daughter, okay? We would love to have her back right now. Love it. It would be the best thing in the world to have her back right now. For who? But even if... For who? For us. For you, too. But listen... You know, I don't want to just up and lift her out of the only environment she's ever known. Who's, uh, whose fault is it it's the only environment she, she knows? It'd be mine. It'd be yours? Yes. Not, not hers? Well, maybe a little hers, but mostly me. If I wouldn't have done the things I've done, we'd still have my daughter today. Now, this is a real stable relationship, right? Yes. To bring your daughter back into? This is this is a stable relationship. Yes. You love this man. Yes. Do anything for this man, right? I mean, you took a beating from him, and you still stay with him. No, no, I'm, I'm not mocking you. I'm saying, he's You're changed. You're making it the way he, you no, want it I, to no, look okay, like. Okay, I'll make it look at this way. You went and got anger ma management classes, right? Yes. You learned from your mistakes. You're never going to do it again, right? Yes. These are all positive things. Besides having your one daughter, your two daughters with. James, do you have any other children? Yes. Do you see that child? Yes. And how often do you see that child? 
Um, on visitations. On visitations. And how often is that? First, third, and fifth Sundays of each month. First what? First, third, and fifth Sundays of each month. First and third Sundays of every month. First, third, and fifth Sundays First, third, and fifth month. Sunday of every month. And you get to see that child? Do you make sure you see it every first, third, and fifth Sunday? You never miss a ch chance? I don't. I do when his dad don't want to bring him. Well, let, let me just ask you a question. How, how did you have another child with somebody else while you were so committed to James? Me and James... Me and James was legally separated, and this was somebody that I met. And so you were legally separated, mm -hmm. and it was this after Caleb or before Caleb, your second child? Was this before your before. second child or after? So is this was before. Mm -hmm. So he goes to jail, and then you find somebody else. Oh, we wasn't together like that. It was just like, I mean, me and James was legally separated. Oh, my separated. God, was it just like sex? <laughs> Tell me, what, what was it like? I love, I love your cavalier attitude about bringing children into the world. It just happened. It just happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's bring that guy out. <laughs> and your name is? Ryan. Ryan, how you doing, Ryan? Pretty good. And um, you know Megan? Yes, sir. And how did you guys meet? One of her friends, which I know. Um... We seen each other at the gas station. She introduced us. Uh, James was in jail at the time. Uh, Megan and I got together. She got pregnant. Um, about a week before we found out she was pregnant, uh, she left me. Well, come. Whoa, 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 whoa. A week before she found out she got pregnant. Yes. She no, left you. A week before we, f we both found out she was pregnant. She had left me. Why did she leave you? Because James had got out of jail. James hold, on, hold on, a hold on, hold on. I'll give you a chance. Hold on a second. And what happened then? She came out and said, "Hey, I'm pregnant." She was crying. You know, okay. You know, we can work through this. You know, whatever we got to do. Uh, she had got back with James. Been with James throughout the whole pregnancy of being pregnant with my son. Um, I think you I, knew. Did you know the stories of what happened to her while she was pregnant with her oldest child? Yes. Did this cause you any alarm? It, it worried me a lot. Okay. Yes. Um, five months pregnant, she found out when she, what we were having. I tried showing up to the doctor's office. Both him and her were there at the doctor's office. She was telling him it was his baby. Is that true? Is that true? That's not true? Is that true, James? James, is that true? Yes, it is true. He knew somewhat of it. So wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. He says he that, oh, that stop, stop. He says that you told him that it was his baby, that you knew it was his. He was in jail. Mm -hmm. Then you told him that it was his baby. So who's lying here? Me. Okay. There we go. Just want to make sure. <laughs> Just establishing a track record here. Go ahead. Okay. After that, uh, I hired an attorney. Took her to court. Wait a second. A responsible young man thought, wow, this is the legal custody issue. I'm not going to go get drunk or high or she said, he said. I'm going to go get a lawyer and make sure that my child's protected. Oh. <laughs> she, she just she started crying and ran out of faith. So to continue with your story, I'm just shocked because you might be the first man on my stage that did the right thing. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> So I hired the attorney. Uh, Nathan was born uh, about six weeks early, five to six weeks early. I got temporary custody at the time. A uh, year went by. And how did you get temporary custody? Um, I knew the situation of their background, how they were back together, and I won't let my child be in that situation. Right. <laughs> Made a mistake, right? But you didn't compound it, and you took all the right steps necessary. Didn't result the violence, just went to a lawyer, did everything you can 
to protect your unborn child. That's right. And make sure the moment it was born that you could protect it and you've taken care of it ever since. And you are and you said you're a 22-year-old man. You were able to do this. Even I, I don't think I could have done what you did at 22. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. You will never have a relationship with your daughter as long as you're with this scumbag. This is the offer here. You either pick her and your daughter or you pick James. Nobody's pushing you. Make whatever decision you want. So you want to ask her, right? That's the point of the show. You wanted to come and talk to her mom, right? I do. Would you like your wife out here with you while you talk to her mother? Yeah, she would like to be out here. Okay, well, why don't you, why, you know what, why don't you ask your wife if she wants to be out here? It's your wife. <laughs> Do you want to be out here? Your mom's coming out there. And just like he said that we called to have Marissa back right now, we called to get a bring, relationship. Let's bring mom her. out on stage Everybody and let's see if they come out and out. ask mom for whatever reason they came on the show. They can ask for whatever reason. And if she doesn't want to come out, this is, if you don't want to ask for your daughter a relationship, it's your daughter. If you don't want to come out here and ask your mom what you want to ask her, stay back there and, you know, don't come out. Boy, that's... That's, that's a woman who's fighting for her daughter. I see that same level of passion you have for your daughter as you have for James. Same level of defending him. That same level of passion that you had with Ryan in the set. Give my daughter back. I've changed. You're not, uh, you're I quit not, drinking. Not, I quit smoking. I quit doing say. all that stuff. You, you lied. Are Mike, but a you lie. lie. About you what? Lie. What you do lie. I lie about? How many times have you told Megan you've changed? How many times? How many times has this girl had to call me and tell me that you're threatening her life? How many times, James? Two months ago, you were stalking her. Two months her. ago, Harry, I was you at are her dad's house when you hey, called first, every stop, two stop minutes. Stop right there. First of all, I'm this is the woman this. that is raising your child. Okay? You will speak to her in a respectful manner. You think that's fair, right? This is your mother. This is the woman that's raising your child. You will speak to her in a respectful manner. You will not use vulgarities in front of her. Do you understand me? Yeah. Or the show will be over. on the show to have a relationship with you and Marissa. I'm, I'm tired of you always telling her bad things and she coming back and telling me with, with dad right there, mom. I don't believe that. I have told her he's bad. You will never be with James. Then as long as really I have her. any control over it, you will not be with James. He's a bad guy. I'll I support you. She's, you. she's four years old. Because you're bad, that's Damn, why. I, I've changed, Sarah. No you don't pool. know nothing. No you just know pool. what you want to know. Oh, two months ago, you were two stalking her. Two months ago, her. that was a lie. Even if it's four months ago, guys, four months ago, did you not say it was a year ago he changed? He did. Two years ago. <laughs> Hello. 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 ago that he threatened me. I'm telling you, it's four months ago that we've been in our new house. It he doesn't matter. It was four months, months ago. ago, six months ago. The point is, it's been recent that he was stalking you. you he just was said threatening four months, you. Six you months. were calling me. How much more you were longer? worried you had to change your phone number because you didn't want him to have your phone number. But I'm lying, guys. When this happened with me changing my phone number and stuff, what was it about? Him. And why? Because you were tired of him calling you. He was following because you up to work. What was his excuse? Why? Do you remember? Why don't you it, tell us? I, yeah, tell me. Because I was living through you and doing what you told me to do so I could have oh. a relationship with you and Marissa. Yeah, you know what, Mom? You know, I'm going to have to yell at you for the next 45 minutes you. because you're the bad guy. I'm not oh, the bad guy. my God. <laughs> I'll tell you what I got to say to you right now, Megan. Ever. You come home, you get away from him, 
You will have a relationship with me. You will have a relationship Somehow with your where? daughter. You will never have a relationship with me as long as you're with this scumbag. <laughs> that is the honest truth. I don't like you. We don't care. I don't care if you like I don't care. Me. You think I want this innocent little child around you? Well, she's All my daughter, Sharon. And that don't make a parent. Well, I would never do nothing to her. All right, stop. Okay, it comes down as simple as this. You have been just lying through your teeth up here. No, I have Yes, you have, you have been. Have. No, okay, I have you know what? Not. This is the offer here. You said he got help with anger management, right? Mm -hmm. That he changed. So I'm offering you. I've gotten help too. Well, you know what? I'm offering you even more help. Okay. Okay? I'm serious. Okay. This isn't sarcastic Steve. Now, this is straight up Steve. You walk out the door with your mom. I'll make sure you get counseling, parent management, anything to assist you in becoming a better mother, but on the condition that you leave James because that's what your mom wants. She said, come home and be a part of your daughter's life if you leave him because he's a bad guy. She has permanent custody of your child. So that's the thing. You either pick her and your daughter or you pick James. Nobody's pressuring you. Make whatever decision you want. But, Mom, go out that door because you're leaving one way or the other. I need to ask her something. No, she, she laid down the groundwork. Now you make your choice. You either oh go out that God. door or you go out that door. Go out with James. Oh. Yeah, you know what? You picked the wrong door. You picked the wrong door. Go out there and be with your scumbag friend. Go out there and be with him. Go be with that dirtbag that treats you so well. You know what? That child is in the best possible place. Your granddaughter and your son are in the best place. Be good parents to him. You're going to college just to play, play football. football. Right. And I found out she was pregnant after I left. Everybody was telling him that I was cheating. He has my big head, but he looks <laughs> just like him. And we gave a DNA test. I've never cheated on him. He's the only guy I've ever been with. If he's not my son, I'm leaving you. It's over. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. The kid's not mine. Don't look like me. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. All you are is a liar, a cheater, a whore. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Yeah, with the dad. Now you took a DNA test. You look really nervous. And I have to ask, why are you crying? <laughs> Adam, Ryan, you... Willie left home and his girlfriend Veronica to go play football at college. Two months later, he finds out Veronica is pregnant. Now, Willie says there's no way he's the father. Take a look. I've been with Veronica for two years now. I left to go to school for football on a scholarship. And when I got there, a month later, she called and told me she was pregnant by me. So I came back in January and she hadn't found out that I was cheating on her, which I told her I was cheating. I, I found out later, six months later, that she was texting a guy on the phone. If you weren't doing nothing more than texting, why you couldn't tell me this? Why would she lie about something so little if she hadn't done anything else for so long? After that, when she got ready to have my, have my son, um, I was in the hospital with her, and I had told her I wanted a DNA test because I felt like she got pregnant while I was gone, it probably wasn't mine. So when I told her that, she gave me kicked out of the hospital with the nurses and the doctors coming to get me out the room because I wouldn't leave. That made me think even more that it wasn't my son because all I said was I wanted a DNA test. I think she cheated on me because she was trying to get back at me for cheating on her. I honestly don't think he's my son, but I still take care of him like he is because I love him. Man. Like, I don't have any other kids, and this is my only child. And if he's not mine, I can start my life on other places. I honestly want him to be my son, but if he's not, I'm out. See, since the first time I met him, like, I love this boy. Like, I've only been with him. He took my daughter as his own, because I have another kid, and he took her as his own. He's the only guy, yeah, I did get pissed off. Like, I, he cheated on me two times. 
And when I found out, yeah, I wanted to go cheat on him, but I couldn't do it. Like, I love him. Like, he's the only guy, like, why I did ever... He, why did he say he cheated on you? <laughs> he said he cheated on me because everybody was telling him that I was cheating. And then he said he suspected I was out doing things, but all I was doing and, was... And you never cheated on him? No, I've never cheated on him. I've always been faithful to him. Yeah, I did go out and text somebody else, but I didn't do nothing with him. I was never why, with him. But why did you text somebody else? Because I got pissed because he cheated on me, and I thought I could go out and go cheat on him and do it back to him, but I couldn't do it to him. He thinks, and this has got to be hard for him, the child might not be his. That's, that's got to be a tough thing, right? Yeah, like it pisses me off every day he's accusing me. Like, he ended up throwing me and my, me and my kids out like three times. The last time he just kicked me out for good. He said he can't trust me. Like, he don't even leave me home by myself. Like, he always his, thinks I have everybody at the house. How long have uh, you guys been apart? Almost going on two months. Going on two months. And... Has he seen his son or allegedly Yeah, he son? still sees the kids. Like, he'll see him every now and then because my daughter asks for him all the time. So you're here today because you want to prove to him that you didn't cheat on him and that... That the baby's his, too. Tell me about what happened at the hospital when your son was born. Okay, we're sitting there, and he just kept staring at him and staring at him. I said, what's your problem? And he's like, he's like, I want a DNA test. And I said, are you serious? Are you really serious? And he's like, yeah. And I said, for what? You know this kid's yours. I've never once cheated on you. And he's like, well, he just don't look like me. And I got mad, and I had him kicked out of the hospital. He looks just like him. Like, he has my big head, but he looks <laughs> just like him. Is Willie a good father? Willie's a good father. Like, he's good to my kids. Like, no matter what, he's never treated uh, my daughter any different. Nothing he like treats her like it's like his, his own yeah. Right now, the relationship you guys are apart. Yeah, because he told me. But he so, can't. what does Willie say? If you pass this, if the child's mine, we'll get back together. Yeah, he said then he'll start trusting me again and everything. But and you want to be with Willie? Yeah, I love him. I love him. I want to be with him. He's the only one I want to be with. Did you take a lie detector test? Yes, I oh, did. Oh, you did, and we gave a DNA test and mm -hmm. totally verify whether Willie's the father to your son. All right, well, uh, let's bring out Willie. If he's not my son, I'm leaving you. It's over. Right, whatever, Willie. You know I never cheated on you. You know I never cheated on you. No, you went you over there and cheated on me. You went and cheated on me. six months. And you mean tell me that you are telling the truth? You ain't telling the truth. You ain't telling the truth. You ain't going on the line. When these tests come out, watch. You owe me an apology. I apologize, but I know it ain't going to be right. You got said, uh, um, pregnant after I left. It went, okay, we, it before takes a whole I left, month. you took the DNA test and the, me, uh, uh, um, a fraternity test and you weren't even pregnant then. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, uh, junior college you're going through, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're going to college just to play, play football. football. Right. I found out she was pregnant after I left. You took a DNA test. And the results are Willie. You're going to college just to play, play football. football. Right. I found out she was pregnant after I left. What position do you play? Defensive end. Defensive end. Yeah. You're a big dude, man. All right. Um, are you any good? Yeah. So, uh, like in high school, will you be? A, were you like a, a star? Yeah, 16 and, sacks. Whoa, pretty good. <laughs> so, I mean, I imagine being a football star that women like throw themselves at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and being a football star, you're not going to say no. No. <laughs> Come on. You got this beautiful woman here, right? Yeah. How long you been with her? Two years. Two years. Now, she says you cheated on her, right? Yeah, I told her. And why did you? Well, because you when, I, when, I got, on, when I got ready to leave, the whole time from when I got ready to leave, she was, all right, I know you're going to go chill with some girls. I know you're going to be all on them girls. And like and you're going to college just to play co you're yeah, going to I college go to school, and play, play football. football. Right. So I was like, 
when it, when it happened, I just did it because I got tired of her always saying, "I know what you're doing." You're saying she wore you down. So yeah. You had to. You had to sleep with them. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> All right. And you know that's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's he's a college guy. You're a little bit older. Uh, maybe he. I think at college you want your freedom, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't you say that to her at least and say? I, I did. You did. Yeah. All right. right. But beyond that, do you love her? Yeah. Do you want to stay with her? Yeah. Like if she Are you going to cheat on her anymore? No. Okay. So let's get down to the fact. She had a little boy, beautiful little boy, right? Yeah. Do you want him to be your son? Yeah. She you named do. him after me. She, you named your son after him? Yeah. Okay. So you're Big Willie, he's Little Willie. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, and you think he's not yours because why? Because I found out she was pregnant after I left. It was like September. Yeah, but September. couldn't you have got her pregnant and then you left? Hey, I'm pregnant? Nah, it was at the beginning of August when I left, like August 6th. So and in they between found out then and before I left, we, she had just got a pregnancy test. But without any, you really have no, besides the texting, which she says she was mad at you, texts another guy. Um, but without any real proof, you don't know that she cheated on you, right? No. Why, why kick, you know, she's got a little girl that you're like dad too, right? Yeah. You kick her and the kids out of the house. What if the DNA test comes back and it's your son? I'm continuing to take care of her. Okay. Will you let her move back in? Yeah. Right. My dad has been there all my life. Um, so you're hoping that she passes lie to test. Mm -hmm. Now, did we give you one? Mm-mm. Oh. <laughs> Thank God for that, right? Yeah, I admitted it, though. <laughs> yeah, you admitted it. All right. Uh, Veronica, you came here because you, you love Willie. Yeah. You want him back. Your kids want you back. So let's hope you pass and DNS to us comes back in your father. Let's hope that. Yeah. Um... Since you have been with Willie, have you ever had sexual intercourse with any other men? You answered no, and the results for that is inconclusive. Um, no, that just means that just means it doesn't mean you, you're guilt or you know you're telling the lie. It doesn't mean you're telling the truth. It just couldn't read conclusively what the answer is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say you're lying, but it doesn't say you're telling the truth. It's just inconclusive. We couldn't get yeah, but today a read it's on. gonna be I'm lying. But let's exactly. read. That's a lie. Let's let's read the other. No, that, that does not mean that. It's a lie. There's two more questions, Willie. While Willie went away to school last year, did you have sexual intercourse with any other men? She answered no. She told the truth. <laughs> In the past six months, have you had sexual intercourse with any other men besides Willie? She answered no. She told the truth. So what I'm saying is, with the first one, apparently she was with somebody doing somebody else. Not apparently. Apparently, it wasn't, well, it wasn't able to it's get not, it. It's not apparently. It's inconclusive. Are you really going to let a word break the two of you up? Yeah, he will. No. Yeah. Let's, no. let's find out. Now, if I was quarterbacking right now and I was running around the stage, do you think you could catch me? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, too. All right. You took, uh, you took a DNA test. And the results are Willie. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Uh, you took a DNA test. And the results are, Willie, you are the father. Um, what do you want to say to Veronica? I'm sorry for saying I'm not the father. Sorry for asking for a DNA test. But at the same time, I know it's more to it. Before I left then, if it's inconclusive, like, it got to be more to it. Like, I'll take another one. Be. That doesn't listen, matter to listen. me. 
You're getting hung up on the wrong thing here. She passed the two other questions. This could be something that years ago. Is that? It, but I'm saying it, it's. But you know that for a fact that you're guilty. Yeah, I told her though. Okay. No, she's... he didn't tell me until I checked the phone records. He would have okay. never told me. I don't understand. How long you've been together? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Do you love her? Yeah. She came here. She took the lie detector test. She didn't fail on any question, and she passed the other ones. And the baby's yours, and you don't seem happy. Yeah, I'm happy for that, but it gotta be something other than inconclusive. She, oh. she would have passed that one too. She would have got that one too. You see what I'm saying? Like, we really, years, she would have got that down, one too. Sit down. Sit down. No, no, no. He he didn't do anything wrong. No. Hold on a second. I think part of the problem is, and, 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 and you're not wrong for feeling this way. I think you're a young guy who got involved with an older woman, and it was, it was a good thing for you for a while. But then when you went to college and you had your freedom, and I got to say, you know, you're playing college football and, and going to college and being a young man, that has to be a very exciting time in your life. And that must open, you know, a lot of doors and windows to see different things that you weren't exposed to while you were in high school, right? Mm. And I got to imagine a young, good-looking guy like yourself wants to enjoy the things that come with being in college. But if you don't want to be in this adult relationship, because I don't believe you're just hung up on that one question. I don't think anybody's going to let a relationship of two years and a, and a child and, and you love this little girl be hung up on that. But what I don't think, Willie, you can't have both. You can't have this family that's going to make you feel good and Willie's the family man and then go back to college and enjoy all that too because it's not fair to her and it's not fair to those little kids. But what I think you do can make a choice is I'm going to be a good father, but I'm not going to be in this relationship anymore. Or I'm going to be faithful to you and I'm going to be in this relationship. But that's a choice you have to make. And either way you make it, as long as you're a good dad and you take care of your kids, then I don't think anybody would blame you for saying, hey, I'm, I'm young, I'm in college, I want my freedom. <laughs> so I, I think you really you have to make a decision. Are you serious, Will? Are you seriously don't believe me? I've never once done anything to you, never cheated on you, never done anything to you. Are you seriously gonna take that inconclusive as me cheating on you? All right, how long or me you doing you, something else? How long have you lied to me? Yeah, I lied to you. Will. If I was to lie to you for six months, seven months, and then come back saying you probably would have, but I looked at the phone Willie, records. Willie, Willie, remember what we just talked about? I think that's, forget about all the other things. Again, it's, it's not so much about her or what she did. You weren't completely honest and trustworthy. But again, I, and I told him, I think this is more of a case of Willie deciding what he wants. Does he want to be in this relationship where he's tied down, he's committed to you with two children, or does he, well, he's got to be a father no matter what if you're going to be a stand-up guy. But I think he's a young guy going to college and wants to have fun. And, and before this, I asked him, like, he didn't have to be with me. Like, I told him before we would have my son. He didn't have to be with me. If he wants so you to go ask, out. You, you, I could ask him, but I think you should be. He's got he's to make a decision for you. Is it with you? Or he's going to go and live the single life on Like, campus. this stuff needs to stop. Like, if you can't stop accusing me every day, then just go. Like, we don't have to be together. That's fine. Raise your kid. Like, I know you want to freaking be out and doing your own thing. Go ahead. Go do it. We don't have to be together. You want to go be a pro or whatever? Go be them. I don't care. Like, I'm tired of this Just stop. Like, you need to stop accusing me. I didn't do anything with you. Do you want to be in a committed relationship or do you want your freedom? I think that's what it comes down to.
Yeah, I really want to be with her so I can raise my son like I was raised. What do you What do you want to do? I want to be with her. So you want to be son. with her? Yes, yeah, so I can. Can you be son. faithful to her? Yes. So when you're playing college football and you walk off to the field after a big game and all those hotties are out there and they're like, Willie, Willie. She'll be right there with him. She's right there with them. Yeah. Give her a hug, man. So you're picking her? Yeah, she always at my game. All right. And so is this what you want? You want to stay with him? Yeah, I do, but he just needs to stop. Well, please let us know. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you because I want to follow what's happening with you. And I want to know if this stays together and if he truly stays by you or if he's not lured to all the candy on campus. <laughs> all right? Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Good luck to you. I hope it works out well for you. Hey, Willie, I'm Dan Rubikoff. I'm the polygraph examiner for the show. Yes, sir. So I want to explain to you guys about what inconclusive means in a polygraph. Inconclusive is neither pass nor fail. Inconclusive comes out when a person's reactions aren't consistent. Now remember, the human body is different, everybody's body is different. So to be fair in a polygraph, the person's results have to be very close to 100% being truthful or very close to 100% being deceptive before an examiner can call it truthful or deceptive. So in her reaction for that particular question, she comes up as inconclusive, meaning that I can't get her high enough towards one or the other to be able to call it fairly. So I hope that I've you know, helped to answer your questions with that. And, uh, you know, of course, you're a nice couple, and I wish you lots of good luck. Not really, you can still get cheated on them, but... Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Now you took a DNA test. Adam, Ryan, you... Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. When Adam's ex Heather gave birth to a baby boy, he was there to hold the newborn as any father would. Now, eight months later, he denies the child and says her other ex, Ryan, is the father. Heather is devastated, and both men took a DNA test to find out the truth. Heather, you called the show? Yes. Uh, a very convoluted story here. Yes, it is. Um, you were with uh, Ryan. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Yes, we were together about nine months, and I mean, we had ups and downs like everybody else did. It's just he was away constantly. He wasn't there for me, and I met Adam, and he was there for me. He gave me the compassion that I hadn't had, and I ended up sleeping out with him. And I thought it would be a one-time thing, and one time turned into yeah, to more, and then. Ryan finds out from his now girlfriend that I had cheated on him. So you're really not sure who the father of your child is? Adam is the father. There's you... no doubt that Adam is the father. What happened with Adam? I had found out two weeks that after me and Ryan decided to work things out, yeah, that I was pregnant. Got said, went to the doctors. I was pregnant. Ryan was so happy. He's like, oh, I'm the father. He was so happy. And then two months passed by. There's no way I could be the father. He don't, you know, it doesn't add up, and then he leaves me after two months being pregnant. So from two months on, I was by myself. Every sonogram, every doctor's appointment, by myself. And then I feel you know, from a doctor's, the conception date, and it turns out that the conception date was the time I was with Adam. So after time and time trying to find Adam to get to talk to him, I told him, look, you're the dad. No, 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 you got that wrong. It's not mine. No, no. So. So that wild, passionate love was already over. Yep. And why, why did that end? I don't know. You don't know. But you're not alone now. No. I'm married. 
got married in May. No, April, <laughs> sorry. Um, and, and you married a guy other than Ryan or Adam? Yes. Okay. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Adam. He signed he the birth certificate. He came, he put his name. He held him. And then what's the problem? What happened? He said, my son started to change his looks. He didn't look like him no more. Oh, you got a cute little boy. <laughs> and, and how old is your little boy now? He's going to be eight months. He's going to be eight months. He's got, a, he's got a lot of hair for an eight month old. So you're married to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Ryan is now with another girl that you know, mm -hmm. right? She's actually my friend. She's your friend? Yeah. Who do you want to be the father of the Adam. child? You want Adam to mm -hmm. be the father. And what does your husband want? He wants Adam to either step up or sign his rights away. All right. So and he can no, adopt and him. And you're saying there's no chance Ryan could be the father? No chance. But there's Everything. a slight chance, right? Slight chance. Okay. Let's meet Adam. Just before. Here again, all you were is a booty call. Oh! I have no feelings for you. Don't want nothing to do with you. The kid's not mine. Don't look like me. You don't look like you? How can you sign the birth certificate? Because I was sneaking out while you were in the hospital and I was having sips of alcohol, so I wasn't... I was away. there. Awake, Adam. Yeah, I snuck out. Whenever I went out for a cigarette break, I was drinking on my cigarette break. So you're a deadbeat. If you want to call it that, the kid's not mine, though. You were with her, and you know she had a boyfriend, right? Yeah. And you slept with her? Yeah, she's a booty call. That's about all okay. I was. I was just... When, but... Yeah, which was bad. Well, when I signed the birth certificate, I was drunk. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Yeah. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Well, when I signed the birth certificate, I was drunk. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. Why did you put your name on the birth certificate? Because I wasn't thinking. I was under the influence. The whole... <laughs> the I whole was... time? Well, when I signed the birth certificate, I was drunk, honestly, and I That's didn't really pay excuse, attention. That's not an excuse, I mean, you know what? That should be an offense, and they should lock you up for that. I mean, really. <laughs> You're not thinking about that kid. That kid's going to have to wonder, well, why did my dad sign the birth certificate if he didn't think that I was his kid? He's so going to wonder what's wrong with for him. You. I felt sorry for you because you had nobody. That's no excuse, Adam. You have a brain, don't you? You know what? She always seems to have somebody. It's not like she has nobody. Right. She's a whore. Of course she's going to have somebody. I'm a whore? I slept with you? That makes me a whore. No well, one you told you to sleep with me. This is a woman that at one time you thought you had a child with. You, say, you signed your name on a birth certificate. Now, think about that. You didn't sign your name to a car title, you know, to a, a lease. You this is him. This is, you signed your name on a certificate of a, of, of a human being saying you were the father. And then you come out and go, oh, you beauty call, and I was drunk. <laughs> you know, I mean. You're not uh, I mean, does, You're not oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you, listen, is this an act right now, or is this really the way you feel? It's the way I feel. I'm just telling the truth. I'm here to get this over with. You're telling the truth, but you, you, you can do it without being so mean. And, hold on, hold on. And it could have been so bad because you were pursuing her. You laid down with her. You had sex with her. Yeah. What's the point? The point is it wasn't so bad at one time. All I was just a fling with her. Felt sorry for her. You felt sorry for her. Yeah, she had You felt nothing. so sorry I'm going to take responsible for a child that I don't believe is mine. Yeah. Okay. Then not only are you mean, you're stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you took a DNA test, right? Yep. Do you know what DNA test is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I 
I'm going to ask you a question, and all serious, I want you to answer it, okay? Yeah. Who is the Vice President of the United States? Obama. Again, government's not my thing. You're close, very close. <laughs> All right, um, you took the test. What if this little boy is your, is your child? Sign my rights over. I don't want nothing to do with her. So, anymore. hold on. Um, you're the man that you're married to now. Whoever's child it is, whether it's Ryan or it's Adam, he wants them to sign over their rights so he could be the adopted father. Yep. So you're saying, even if this is your own flesh and blood, you don't want nothing to do with it? Yeah. What you're saying is like punching me in the stomach right now. Because I would, I can't imagine my, because I think about my son, my children, every time I do the show, and thinking like my little boy being like, I don't want you. Man, it, it, it just, it tears me apart, man. That you, this, we're not talking about a dog or a cat. This is... Uh, uh, see this little boy here? If he's your son, you really wouldn't want anything to do with him? Nope. Uh, you, you hearing that, what's your fear? I mean, it hurts me, and I'm not even involved in this story. It hurts me, because he's missing out. He has an amazing little boy. He's smart, funny, always smiling. You, you, if he is your little boy, I'm just saying this, and if you do this and you sign him over, you will miss out on a lifetime of just pure happiness that you gave your son away. And mm -hmm. it might be one of those things that you regret for the rest of your life. So be it. Uh, Ryan's here, uh, the other potential father. Um, you cheated on him with this guy, which, wow. <laughs> this, I, I better see the biggest slug in the world walking through that door. Uh, let's bring out Ryan. All you are is a liar, a cheater, a whore. Hold on. You were, you were dating her. Um, were you happy when you were dating her? Yes, I was. Um, when you found out that she had cheated on you, what was your reaction? Um, that I was going to beat his face in. Okay, but that's over with now. You moved yep. on. You have a, a new girlfriend, right? Yeah. You like her? Yeah. Nice girl? Yeah. Now, you know, she had a little, uh, little boy. Yeah. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. It can't? No. Nope. No chance in hell. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Unprotected sex? We used cons a couple times. A couple times. But yeah. sometimes you didn't. Yeah. And you understand biology, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you know that there's a possibility, slim that it may be, that you could be the biological father of a yeah. child. Are you hoping that you're the father or you're, you're no. hoping that you're not? Yeah. And if this test comes back and you are the father? I'm going to take care of it. You are going to take care of it. You're raising this little boy now? Yes. And you don't care that she was with him or with him. You want the little boy? Yeah, I want him. You took a DNA test. Ryan. You're raising this little boy now? Yes. And you don't care that she was with him or with him. You want the little boy? Yeah, I want him. Now, she is currently married, and her husband is saying, whoever's the father, he wants them to sign over the rights. No. But you're saying if, you're, if this is your little boy, you're not signing rights away. No. You're going to take care of the little boy. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> your girlfriend's name is Sarah. Let's bring Sarah out. 
crying. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. You bought Heather jewelry for having the baby, and now you're saying that you were drunk when you signed that birth certificate? Birth certificate. You're full <laughs> And you, you can be a vindictive bitch and manipulative, and sometimes you, it feels to me like you're coming in between me and Ryan. Now, you guys are friends, though, right? We, we have a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Who do you think is the father? Adam. You think Adam's the father. <laughs> what, if, what if it is... Your boyfriends. I don't know what will happen because uh, it's that would be, be hard. I don't trust Heather and Ryan together. So I'm married. I'm happily married. You might be happily married, but sometimes when do you, you say, think your remember boyfriend, when? Do you think your boyfriend would still sleep with her? I don't know. All right, let's meet your husband. What's your husband's name? Dave. Let's bring out Dave. For one, Adam, you can go to the hospital and go in drunk. They'll kick you right you know no, that. I'm just taking a guess. You're kind of wasting your time talking to this one. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why don't you stand by your wife? Um, you're raising this little boy now? Yes. And, and you don't care that she was with him or with him. You love her. This is your wife. You want the little boy. Yeah, I want him. I don't care if he was, she was with Ryan. I don't care if she yeah, was with that's, him. That's, that's, it's neither here nor there. But there's a little boy involved. And you're saying... Whoever the father is uh, biologically, you'd want them to sign over their rights so you could be <coughs> the adopted father. Yeah. Ryan has said if he's the father, he wants to take care of it. It's his son. He wouldn't give it up. Um, this knucklehead over here said, eh, you know, I don't want it. Give it away. You know, let me move on. Ryan, if you are the father, I would like to have you sign your rights away. I'll still let you see him. Ain't happening. Oh, okay, this is Adams. In a way, I'm kind of hoping he's the father. Not for the little boy's sake, but just for the sake that you would get him. You know what I mean? Like he's willing to say he'll sign, which would be good for you. Um, the DNA test for Adam. You're like sweating this out too. But in all truthfulness, if he's not the father, that doesn't automate make you the father. Because, you know, you were having a good time. <laughs> she didn't say no. <laughs> and I have to ask, why are you crying? <laughs> all right. Adam... You are not the father. Oh! 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 I knew it. Hold on, hold on. Before you waste any air or time on my stage, get the hell off my stage. <laughs> I swear to God, I just heard, thank God. <laughs> Like, He's like biting you. <laughs> <laughs> the youth of America. Okay, you took a DNA test. Are you the father, Ryan? You look really nervous. Ryan. Ryan. You are the father. Um. Your, your reaction to, I mean, do you have any other children? So this is your first child? Yeah. You, I, I, I'm assuming for the whole time this little boy's been alive, you did not know you were a father. Right. If he says, hey, you know, you guys are married now and he's with her, what do you say about him helping with the child? Why does he not disappoint that little boy? 
Because I don't want to have to have him come into his life and him leave. The good thing is, you really do know who the father of that child is. You can go change that birth certificate and get Knucklehead's name off of it. Um, <laughs> now, what are you going to do? I don't know. It's, it's a big thing, right? <clears throat> does it really change anything that the two of you have been? Yeah, it, it does. does. It does change. And why? Because he has a child or because he has a child with her? With her. With her. But she's your friend. Like I said, a love-hate relationship. All right. A little more hate right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just hope that you work it out. For the little boy, you got, you got a beautiful-looking son. Can he go back and see his son? If he wants to. If he wants to. Do you want to go see your son? Yeah. Okay. Can we all go back? And there's going to be no fighting or anything, right? All right. Let's go see your son. So you believe that your brother is having sex with your sister? Oh, yeah, definitely. I am not no. sleeping with him. Don't sit here and lie to me! Did you ever have sex with Donald? No. When you're both living in the same house, you're both sleeping in the same bed, a couple months later, she found out she was pregnant. You took a lie detector test. Did you sleep with your brother? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That freaking child looks exactly like Donald! No, he doesn't. Who is the father of your child? I have no clue. I slept with two other guys. That is a damn lie, and you knew it! Took a DNA test. Your brother Donald. My boyfriend of almost three years accused me of being pregnant with someone else's baby throughout my whole pregnancy. Everything been going crazy at home. I have to know the truth. You ever cheat on her? No. Something I gotta tell you. No, Patrick, no! We really don't need to read these right? I do. Oh, you do want them read? Are you denying the baby? How could you do that? You know, I want to make sure this child is mine, obviously. Well, let's find out if the little girl is yours. No! No! The topic of today's show is one of the biggest cultural taboos, incest. This story begins with siblings that were separated as children. Jennifer and Donald are blood brother and sister and were overjoyed when they found each other as adults. But now... Their family believes they are having sex and that Jennifer's year-old son belongs to her brother, Donald. Take a look. I am here today to convince my sisters that I am not sleeping around with my brother. They believe that he is the father of my two-year-old son. I'm sick and tired of the rumors that are going around and I want them, as of today, to stop. What angers me the most is when my sisters are believing everybody else over their own sister and stop accusing me of sleeping with my own brother, which you know is not true. I haven't seen him in over 32 years and we're hanging out as friends, as brother and sister. We live together, we've done things together, he's been there for me, but to say that we're sleeping together is ridiculous. Stay out of my life, stay out of my son's life, let me be a good mom to my son. That's your sister on the tape. Yes, um, strong allegation to lob at somebody um, oh, yeah. sleeping with your own brother. What is uh, going on? Well, um, when they were younger, they were all separated and um, in foster care. And they all found a family. And about 17 years ago, we all met up, except for one we couldn't find. And um, about three years ago, we finally found her. And I was overjoyed. I was so overjoyed. I was happy. And here I found out she wanted to live like 45 minutes from me. 
So um, I went down to pick her up on the 4th of July. We had a big party, and here my, Don, uh, my son, or uh, sorry, uh, my brother Donald came. And everything was cool. And as the day went on, I was taking notice that they were just a little too close, a little too close. You know, having their arms around each other, rubbing each other's back, just, you know, holding hands. And this hands. is the first time they met? Uh, no, actually, no, no. They actually met before I met her. Um, they knew each other for maybe, I don't know, maybe a month or two before okay. I met her. And but this is the first time the whole family's getting together. Yes, exactly. And mm -hmm. it's a 4th of July party. Yes. And they're, they're acting more like a couple mm -hmm. than brother and sister. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as time went on, I was like, I can't take this no more. So I confronted them. I was like, what is going on between you two? And they were like, nothing. You know, nothing's going on. We just had this special bond. Okay, so I left it alone. Then, as time went on, maybe... Now, what did you think was going on at the well, time? I mean, it was, it, it was plain and simple. I knew damn well what there was going on. What was going on? It, that they, something was, like, some sexual contact was going up. on. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, I left it alone. I wasn't going to argue, you and know. And knowing that they're, they have the same father, mm -hmm. same mother, mm -hmm. these are your brother and sister. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Sick. It made me just want to puke. Okay, I was so overjoyed to finally meet her, and then all of a sudden, my brother and my own sister is, has this, this thing going on? No, that's not right. Well, what happened then? Um, so then um, within maybe a month, um, her, uh, Jen, she uh, pretty much gave Donald um, a choice. You know, uh, Donald was, was, was with somebody at that point, and she gave him a choice of picking her or Jen. And he went and picked Jen. And they moved in together. And then... Uh, okay, so he was with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he left that person uh -huh, and with moved him. in with your sister. Yep. His sister. Yep. It was disgusting, but what could I have done? You Did know? you ever confront them and say, hey, you having sex? No, I never really come straight out and said it. Did you say, why did you move in with each other? Oh, well, it was... No, I never, I never asked that because it was kind of... I mean... A couple months later, she found out she was pregnant, okay? After he moved in with her? Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. And did you say, who's, uh, who's the father? No, I didn't need to. So you believe that your brother is having sex with your sister? Oh, yeah, definitely. Who do you think is the father of your sister's son? Donald. Your brother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think that they're still having sex now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you still say it like, I'm sorry. I mean, it's I'm like, sorry. did they have coffee today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The reason why I'm saying it is because it's so, it's right there. It's... Has she ever admitted it to you? Uh, no. And I guess we're going to find out today. They took lie detector tests mm -hmm. and a DNA test whether oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Donald is the father to this. Oh, uh... yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's bring out uh, your sister, Jennifer. Nothing but a liar. Excuse me? You, I am not sleeping with him, and I know. Oh. Whatever. You, no, he you are. Son, he is not oh, son please. my son. That freaking child looks exactly like Donald. No, he doesn't, Chris. That child is a split image of Donald. Don't sit here and lie to me. Did you ever have sex with Donald? No. When you're both living in the same house, you're both sleeping in the same bed. Who is the father of your child? I have no clue. I slept with two other guys. That is a damn lie, and you knew it! Did you ever have sex with Donald? No. When you're both living in the same house, you're both sleeping in the same bed. I was told that at this party when you met your brother, that he was involved with somebody else. And he left that person to move in with you. Yes. That's it was not before I moved in with him because I had no place to go because I was pregnant back in May. Who is the father of your child? I have no clue. I slept with two other guys prior. So during the time you were living with Donald, you were having sex with two other men? Yes. Did you ever have sex with Donald? No. Um, these two other men, did they ever take DNA tests? To no. They never did. I'm still trying to get a hold of them. You're still trying to get a hold of them? Yes. Did one night stands or? Just one night stands. One night stands. Now, you <laughs> were aware that we did get paperwork saying that two men took a DNA test, whether they were the father of your child, and both DNA tests came up that they
they were not the father of your child. Okay. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Okay. So I guess somehow we did get a hold of you guys, right? <laughs> Isn't that shocking that you couldn't and we did? <laughs> so why are you lying about that? I knew the paperwork was done, but I had it done with one other guy. But you knew that there was paperwork for two. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other two I had no clue. Well, but well, the one I did know. How many were there? Two guys. Two guys. Okay, and we have paperwork for two guys, DNA test, and that says that they are not the father. Christina, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to leave the stage for a few okay. minutes. I'm going to talk to your sister, and then I'll bring you back out. Thanks. Why don't you have a seat? Now, since you're here and you took the lie detector test and we took a DNA test, whether Donald is the father or child, is there anything that maybe you say, you know what, I was going through a difficult time, um, whatever reason, I was drinking too much, I was doing drugs, whatever the case may be, I did something I'm not proud of, and I slept with my brother. I admit it, I'm not, I'm not perfect, and I wasn't in the state of mind. Did you sleep with your brother? Yes. You did sleep with your brother. Um, I wasn't in the state of mind. No, no, no. no. I was so, and, and this was after you had moved in together? Yes. Okay, so, so it wasn't before? No. When you first met Donald, what was your reaction? Like, this is my brother, or he's a good-looking guy? I look at it as just as him being my brother. Okay. Is this the first time that you, like, because your sister's saying that you never admitted that you slept with your brother. Yes. Is this the first time you're coming out admitting yes. that you actually slept with your brother? Yeah. Okay. Because I knew if I held it in, it wasn't going to make me feel good. Okay. Um, could Donald be the father of your child? There are a possibility. That's a possibility. Um, if that is the case... If Donald turns out to be the father of your child, what are you going to do? I really don't know. Because really, the person that's going to suffer the most is your it's child. My son. Um, <laughs> how did it happen? I mean, you're living together. Is your brother coming on to you? Are you coming on to your brother? Coming on to me. He's coming on to you. Yes. Are you drinking? I was, I was drinking, and I just didn't really, couldn't realize anything. You didn't realize anything? Yes. After you had sex, did you think, oh, my God, what did I do? Yes, I did. You did? And how many times would you say you had sex with your brother? Just once. Just once. Just once. Because I, I, I left him. You left him? I left him and moved on. But then you came back to him, right? Yes. And you never had sex again? No. I don't believe that. <laughs> I'm just How many times have you slept with him? Once. How many times? That is a damn lie. Took a DNA test. Your brother Donald. How many times have you slept with him? What? How many times? Do you feel bad that this might kind of sever the relationships with you and your siblings? Yes. Do you think you'd like to repair the relationships with your no. siblings? You don't want to repair nope. them. Just move on with my life and move on with my life and try to get my son back and because try your to be one, a mom your other him. sister right now is raising your son. Yes. Um, your, your other sister Anna, um, did you ever admit to her that you slept with your brother? No. Um, well, she's here now, and I think you owe it to tell her because I I think we're we're building up. I mean, we're going to find out lie detector tests, which I guess. We don't need to really get to those, right? Um, but the DNA test, I, I mean, who knows? You said you were sexually active with other men. Yes. But now it's probably a good possibility that Donald is the father. 
Let's bring out Anna, and um, you can tell her whatever you need to tell her. I can't believe you. You have been raising her son for the past year. Yes, six months, seven months. I got to imagine you were listening backstage. Yes. Anything you want to tell your sister? I guess you now already know. Yeah, I do, and I ask you over and over and over again. If you and Donald were, re were having sexual intercourse and you said no, you both sat at my kitchen table and told me no. Could you ever patch things up with your sister and your brother? She's got to stop lying. She's got to stop. She's got to stop telling the truth somewhere. And you could accept her still in your life. Yes, but she's got to stop lying. Okay, that's fair enough. Here are your sister, who's, would you say she's a good mom to your son? Yeah. Okay. That, she, I, that she, I have to say. And she loves him, and there's no reason to dispute that. She's saying, hey, I want you in my life. I, I still want, but you just got to stop lying. Talk to your sister. I can do that. You stop lying from here on out. It's going to take more than that, but I'm not, I'm not on anything more to do with the family. Well, number one, you told them a lie on stage because you've been involved with Donald more than once. Mm. No, it wasn't a one-time thing. When you're both living in the same house, you're both sleeping in the same bed for over two years. No, we didn't. You sleep with a little boy in your same bed. No. Yes. Did you no. and Donald share a bed? No. We each had our own room. You took a lie detector test. I think it, it's got to take some guts to admit what you did. But if your sister's saying, hey, I want you in my life, but you got to stop lying, why not just stop lying? I went off in the door. Um, <laughs> let's take the screen back out. Okay. Um, you obviously were listening backstage. Yes, I was. And everything you believe to be true is, in fact, true. Mm -hmm. She did sleep with your brother, mm -hmm. Donald. Is there any way that... You want to be in your sister's life still? Uh, if this comes out to be Donald's, no way in hell, okay? You don't want anything to do with your sister? Not if it comes out to be Donald's, no way in hell. I can understand, okay, being Talk drunk, okay? I, I can understand, okay, you being drunk, okay? One time, okay? Messing up. But how many times have you slept with him? Once. How many times? How many freaking times? Once. That is a damn lie, and you knew it! Is there anything you want to say to your sisters before I read this? Nope. Okay. Um, did you have sexual intercourse with your brother Donald around the time you got pregnant with your son? You've admitted to that. You confessed to the lie detector examiner that, yes, you slept with Donald. Uh, we asked you, is uh, your brother Donald the father of your son? You answered probably. You told us that's probably the case. Um, you also told Dan Rebikoff, the man that administers our lie detector test, that you believe that he is the father, and you indicated that, that you believe that Donald is the father of your son. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, in the last 30 days, did you have any sexual physical contact with your brother Donald? No. And... Is, is that what you're saying, or yeah, is that the I'm truth? Saying. That's what I'm saying. Is it the truth? Yes. You answered no, that you haven't had sex with them in the last 30 days, physical contact, and the results are you did not tell the truth. Another lie! Another lie! Um, Donald, your brother, is backstage. Um, he doesn't want to come out. I don't blame him. Um, if I was in his situation... Which, thank God, I'm not. Um, but I, would, I, I honestly, I mean, it does say one thing, though. Uh, you're standing out here taking a heat by yourself, and he's hiding back there. So, um. <laughs> so now, if he fails this lie detector test, too, I mean, the evidence would just be overwhelming against you that two of you are sleeping together. We asked Donald... Uh, do you have romantic feelings for your sister? He answered no. He did not tell the truth. In the last month, have you had any sexual physical contact with your sister? He answered no. He did not tell the truth. Never lie. Um, <laughs> did, did you have sexual intercourse with your sister around the same time? He said no. You've admitted that you did. He failed that. He did not tell the truth. 
And we asked him, are you the father of your sister, Jennifer's son? He answered, no, he did not tell the truth. <laughs> no matter what the outcome of this DNA test, no matter what the outcome of the situation with your sisters, I am um, saying it right now, whatever professional help that we can get you, provide you, therapy, therapist, counselor, somebody to help you, I believe that this situation is still going on. I don't think it's going to be good for you or your brother. And I strongly would say after the show's over that you get some help for the situation. <laughs> took a DNA test. Boyfriend of almost three years accused me of being pregnant with someone else's baby throughout my whole pregnancy. You ever cheat on her? No. Took a DNA test. Your brother Donald is the father of your child. That's freaking disgusting! That is, I'm done! Okay. You stay out of my. Oh, sorry. I'm in your life. Okay. No, you're not. Okay. How is she no, going to find out listen, now? Listen. How is she going to stay out of your life? Disgusting. Your child? I got nothing to do with her. Okay. I don't care if she's raising my son or not. I want nothing to do with her. Why? If she's going to turn me down. She's going to disown me, and she's not going to like me. She's saying, just be honest, tell her the truth, and I guess you definitely want. The relationship to stop the it sexual relationship. should have never started. Well, obviously, but it—you obviously want it that needs to, stop. to stop. Okay, your son's in the world, and he's behind the eight ball already because of the position you put him in. But one thing that I don't want to keep happening is that you keep making this horrible mistake, and maybe you get pregnant again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, knowing what you did is so wrong. You have to put a stop to it. And you can stand here and say, oh, it's over. It's not over. But if you keep doing it, and if you don't take the help that I've extended to you, this is a situation that's going to be so unhealthy for your child and for you. And you have to be strong at some point and say, I'm not going to do this anymore. Whatever reason, whatever case may be, drunk, not drunk, feeling alone, feeling the whole world against you, that has to stop. I don't think you were drunk because you told me you don't drink. Yes, I do. It doesn't Once matter. In a while. Truthfully, at this I point, know. it doesn't really matter if she was drunk, sober. The fact of it is, like you said, what happens now? What happens to the day when your, your son gets older? Are you going to be able to hide this from him for the rest of his life? You can't. You can't lie to him. I don't know how to help her. She might be reaching out she to you now, though. She needs professional help. And we're going to provide that for her. What do you want to say? I just want to say, okay, I know you didn't have a good life, okay? You were in foster care, okay? And I'm sorry for that. That's not my fault. But why would you try and put your own son through a, a life of hell, okay? If it wasn't for Anna, that boy would be God knows where, okay? I understand your anger. I understand just your frustration. But really, now it's a case of what do we do going forward? Yeah, um, that's true. Because you can't undo it. You can't, you know, there's a human being involved here, yeah. a little human being. I know. And what's going to be best for him? It's certainly not going to be everybody hating each other. No. That's not going to be the case. Um, but it is, it is, listen, some of it is damage and some of it is you do need help. But then some of it's too saying, I know this is wrong and I need to stop this. <laughs> um, and I gotta ask you, are you willing to stop this? Yes. You're Get gonna the stop it. I need. Yes. Okay. And I do this, and I probably never have taken this more serious than I'm gonna do this now. And it's not a game. We say it's a game, but it's it's really not a game because everybody has to make this decision in life. 
and it's pick a door time. And pick a door is just basically making a decision in your life. Am I going to keep going down and doing the same horrible thing that I've been doing? Am I going to keep doing that and just go back to it because it fills my selfish needs and it's what I know and I'm afraid to make change? Or do you go out the other door and say, this road's going to be tough too, but there's hope, there's promise, there's help. Those are the decisions. Everybody comes to that fork in the road. You're not the only one. We all have to make that choice at some point in our life. So this is the choice. There is Donald out that door. And if you go out that door, you're not going to seek help. You're not going to get help. And you're going to be with Donald. And so far, it sounds like that's been nothing but bad for you. And you got two sisters up here. One that seems, no matter what, She's going to stand by you and help you. And even her, who's very excitable and everything else. <laughs> but she seems like she's not going to turn it back on you either. She's a fighter. She's going to help you out. And we're going to help you out and get you some professional help. Yeah. But like with anything, you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink it, right? That's right. So... You're going to walk off the stage with your sisters, and we know you're going to make the decision at the end of the show. You don't even have to say anything. You're going back to Donald, or you're going to the help and with your sisters. Walk off the stage right now. My boyfriend of almost three years accused me of being pregnant with someone else's baby throughout my whole pregnancy. You ever cheat on her? No. Are you denying the baby? How could you do that? You know, I want to make sure this child is mine, obviously. Well, let's find out if the little girl is yours. Patrick is afraid that his girlfriend, Ebony's two-month-old daughter, is not his because two other men in their neighborhood claim that they were sleeping with her. Ebony is tired of him denying their child and says the DNA test will put these doubts to rest. Take a look. I'm here today because my boyfriend of almost three years accused me of being pregnant with someone else's baby throughout my whole pregnancy. And now she's two months old and he's still denying her. And this is ignorant guy in my town saying he slept with me and he didn't. And Patrick believes them over me. And his family member is telling him that he slept with me and didn't. And I don't get why they're even lying like that. He calls me a whore. He calls me friendly. He calls me, while I was pregnant, a fat bitch and a slut, all that. He's doing it because he doesn't trust me whatsoever. I wanted him to take a test because I believe the ones that are, that are accusing are the ones doing the most dirt. I don't think he's cheating, but he does flirt with girls. If I find out he's cheating, like, it'll crush me. But I don't think I'm going to leave him, though, because I love him. But it'll hurt me. She's the perfect girl. Let me just get get that out of the way, you know what I'm saying? She's she, a perfect girl. Yeah, she's been good to me, been very helpful, you know, and, I mean, she's been there for me, but at the same time, with all the rumors going around town, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, you could be perfect, but if you're perfect, your name shouldn't even be on the streets, you know what I'm saying? I, I understand that there's uh, a couple guys that said they slept with her. Yes. Um, did you want to have a child with your girlfriend? Yeah, we've been trying to have a child, like, we've been together for three years, you know what I'm saying? We've been trying for almost two years. Then she found a job, you know, like, she started going to work, everything was fine. Then that's when the relationship started going down the drain, right after she got the job. What happened? Like, like I mean, I don't know. We've always had trust issues in, uh, in the relationship, you know You've what I'm saying? You've always had trust issues. Yeah, always. Like, and when she got her job, like, everything just changed, you know what I'm saying? Her persona personality changed. You know, maybe she felt like she didn't need me anymore. You know what I'm saying? Now she getting her own money or whatever. And but isn't that a good thing to become independent? Yeah, yeah. But but and it's, and it's a co-worker also. Like you know what I'm saying? Like 
like, who saw me with her one time, we went to the store. Because the type of chick she, like, the girl she says she is, like, she don't look at no guys, she don't talk to nobody, you know what I'm saying? She don't, like, she's not friendly, she said. Like, okay, but yeah, we, we at the store, and it's a guy, like, I didn't even know he was working with her, coming up to her, talking about, buy me this. He, he had a, he had a, he had a uh, money in his hand, right? He had money, but yet still asking my girl to buy him food. It, it didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, do you know that guy? Well, what, did she buy him food? I mean, she wasn't going to buy it in front of me, nah. I mean, you think she would But buy I don't understand. Does that mean she slept with him? And then the same guy, I, I wasn't finished, Steve. The same guy, like, you know what I'm saying, started going around uh, uh, the, the town saying that, you know what I'm saying, they had something going on or whatever, you know what I'm saying, they had sex. Do you want her daughter to be yours? Steve, tell you the truth, that's all I, that's all I really want. You want that? Yeah, because, like, I grew, up in, I grew up in foster care. I never had a family. All I, ask, I mean, look at that beautiful little girl. All I ask is, all I, all I want is a family. You know, you what I'm want saying? you want her to. Be, um, and do you, do you feel a bond with that little girl? Oh yeah. Every time we get around each other, she's smiling at me. You know what I'm saying? Laughing. Is there any reason you believe that she cheated? I mean, besides the guy asking for food, um, I mean, still. Like, I mean, throughout the relationship, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we have trust issues, right? But, like, okay, like... But she, is it just trust issues because you're not a trusting person? Or but at the beginning of the relationship, she was cheating on me, you know what I'm saying? When we, when we first started going out, she was cheating on me. Then, you know what I'm saying, which means, like, okay, well, if you did it, if you did it before, you might do it again. So I already have that mindset that, okay, if it happened before, it might happen again. You then, ever cheat on her? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, your girlfriend has been back in a seclusion room. She hasn't heard any of this, okay? Yes. Patrick, you believe everyone else but me. I can't take it anymore. I cannot take it anymore. And you denying the baby? How could you do that? She's yours. What about all the rumors going around? What you want me to do? Every time I approach these guys, they deny it, and you know that. It shouldn't be coming to me at all. Maybe they just don't like you. That's the only thing I can see. That's the only thing. I don't know. First of all, the one from my neighborhood, I don't even know him. I saw him at work like five times the most. I'm sick and tired of it. Well, uh, Ebony... We're on the same page. I'm sick and tired of it, too. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're here. So I got to tell you. No, Patrick, no! We really don't need to read these done, right? I do. Oh, you do want them read. You know, I want to make sure this child is mine, obviously. Well, let's find out if the little girl is yours. So I got to tell you. No, Patrick, no! I have to know the truth. If I if I don't know what's going really going on, I'm ne it's, it's never gonna be okay with us. You do know what's going on. I've been trying to tell you. You just don't believe me. You don't believe me. Um, yeah, I have trust in it. Are you cheating on him? No. Have you cheated on him? No. You said in the beginning. The, yes, he But was he said too. he cheated on you too. Right. So, uh, but you're saying since you worked that out, since you've had your baby, you're not cheating. Right. Are you cheating since all this happened? Have you recently cheated? No, I haven't. No, you haven't? No. And he's the father, no doubt about it? No doubt. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. <laughs> uh, you came here and took a lie detector test. We asked Ebony, Besides the three men you were with in the beginning of your relationship, wow, um, have you had any sexual physical contact with any other men that Patrick does not know about? She answered no. She told the truth. <laughs> in the last two years, have you had sexual physical contact with anyone else besides Patrick? She answered no. She told the truth. <laughs> told you, Patrick. Told 
Is there anything you... Let me start by saying I'm sorry, okay? With all the doubts, all everything we're going on, I thought I really thought you were cheating on me. No, Patrick, no! No! I told you I wasn't! No, Patrick! Every thug, everything you put me through, I told you! Oh, my God. What is it that you have to tell her? I was cheating on you at the beginning of the relationship. I was. It wasn't just old sex. <laughs> you made me feel so bad about what I did and you. Oh my God, I mean, no. You know, I care about you. Don't I? I do everything for you. Every day, every day I wake up, you know that. I tell you that. I live next to you. I tell you I love you all the time. I didn't mean to. I didn't want to. I would never want to. This, and this is why we're here, so we can fix this relationship and move on. Because I haven't been cheating on you, and I want to move on. You know, I want to make sure this child, well, this child is mine, obviously. And that's just where is this baby to get. We really don't need to read these then, right? I do. Oh, you do want them read. Well, let's find out if the little girl is yours. I really don't need to read these then, right? I do. Oh, you do want them read? It was only in the beginning. Yes. Thank you. Then we really don't need to read these then, right? Yeah. You don't want them read, right? I do. Oh, you do want them read? Um, besides the women that Ebony knows about in the beginning of your relationship, have you cheated on e Ebony with anyone else? He confessed. He said yes. Since you've been in a relationship with Ebony, Ebony, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone else? He confessed. He said yes. Have you cheated on Ebony in the last two years? He said yes. He confessed. Did you cheat when you was, the time you was with me at, at my house? That's not good. When you was at my house, you cheated? When I first moved in, when I was going back and forth, so. Your daughter's two months old? Yeah. Is it, I mean, it sounds like you both made some mistakes. Um, if you, it's, it seems to me that you truly do love each other, care about each other. You're both up here expressing a lot of emotion. Um, is it possible to look at your daughter and say, you know what, she's more important than anything that happened in the past we're going to move on past this and we're going to stay faithful to each other? She's already faithful. I just... This what I'm here on still. your part. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I've been cheating on her, like, in a minute. You know what I'm saying? And I'm willing to change. That's why, like, everything been going crazy at home because I feel like if now I choose to be faithful, I want to make sure, I want to be 100% sure that she's being also well, being faithful. Well, now you faithful. know. Yes. Um, well, let's find out if the little girl is yours. She didn't cheat. But stranger things have happened, right? Patrick, you are the father.
I'm so sorry, okay? I'm so, so sorry. You still love me? All right, you ready to go back to that little lady back there? Definitely, Steve. All right, let's go. Why? This way. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs>